That's right, the title is not a joke, I am going to be recording a video where I go over all 165 perks that you can find in columns 3 and 4 of all of Destiny 2's legendary weapons. Uh, just to clarify something for the previous videos, because I didn't put intros, I made a mistake, a lot of people pointed this out in the comments. Number one, these videos are designed for end game PvE specifically, uh, and even more specifically, more optimal playstyles than more consistent playstyles. But this will kind of cater towards just end game in general compared to some of the exotic armor lists. Uh, and one more thing, uh, these lists are by no means decisive. I know I sound very definitive, sound very decisive in my videos. However, the entire point of making all of these tier list videos, I'm not going to make them every single season. I'm not going to spam as much. Uh, I know my content has, got, has been a little bit spammy as of late, but uh, I do want to kind of clarify that I'm trying to develop a baseline of content through my spreadsheet. And every season, I'm going to just make a brief update on these. Like, let's say Bungie releases some new perks. I would just add them to the perk tier list, new exotic armor. And uh, with your help, with the comment section, the comment section is always open for feedback. I'm going to implement your feedback. Like, I know a lot of you guys had a lot of criticisms, a lot of comments about some of the exotic armor, for example, in the exotic armor tier list. And of course, I'm going to address that. I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. So, but the goal is we got to start somewhere, right? And I don't think there are resources like this in the Destiny 2 community right now. So I wanted to get started with creating them so that we can update them and improve them every season. That being said, I did put a fair amount of thought into this perk tier list, a bit more than the exotic armor tier list, I can assure you of that. So hopefully this will go down a bit smoother and some of the decisions here will be more understandable. So with that out of the way, um, one more clarification I want to make about this tier list is that perks are going to be ranked on their independent strength in a vacuum. So for example, let's say there's a really good perk that doesn't have any good weapons that it's on. We're not going to necessarily dock that unless it's like a perk that's designed for specific weapons. So maybe it's like a perk that only exists on rocket launchers and you don't really think that Bungie would ever put it on like a machine gun or something like that just because of the nature of the perk. Then obviously, you know, we're going to account for that. But if a perk is really, really good, but it just hasn't had enough time to shine on a truly like good example of a weapon it should be on, then we're not going to dock it for that reason. Okay, so um, with that out of the way, let's uh, let's start right off with number one, and that's going to be Adagio. So Adagio, Adagio is, you know, a lot of people are familiar with this perk because of the uh, PvP slug incident, the one body incident. Uh, but in PvE, it essentially amounts to about a 10% DPS increase. You know, it lowers your fire rates uh, by 20%, but it also increases your damage after a kill by 30%. Uh, and that effect, you know, it's not very good. Uh, it makes a lot of weapons feel very sluggish, even if it is technically a DPS increase. So Adagio is going to go into the E tier. It also does require a weapon kill, and the effect that you get off the kill is relatively mediocre so we're gonna leave it at that in the e tier and we're gonna move on to adaptive munitions so adaptive munitions uh this is a premier anti-barrier perk very very good on primaries as well as on traces with radiant for anti-barrier anytime you have something like anti-barrier pulse rifle anti-barrier auto rifle in the artifact adaptive munitions is fantastic it shreds through a gm, GM barrier champion in an instant so very, very good for stun primaries. Uh, outside of that though, I wouldn't really use this thing for breaking, you know, shields that are not barrier shields because match game is no longer a thing. And that tends to be kind of counterproductive when it comes to just using a primary to plink away at a non-match shield. So with that being said, adaptive munitions does have some use in end game content, but I wouldn't say it's like a very, very important perk, especially with the existence of weapons like Wish Ender and Arbalest, which are much more popular than using something like an adaptive munitions pulse rifle. So I'm gonna go ahead and put adaptive munitions as our first C tier perk ranked 53 and we're going to move on to Adrenaline Junkie. So Adrenaline Junkie is a pretty common perk that people like to pair with Demolitionist. Uh, me and my friend Wabi were kind of really contemplating where we wanted to put this perk. If you're not familiar with what it does, it's basically like a grenade version of Swashbuckler. It stacks up to, I believe, 33-ish percent damage. Yeah, 33-ish percent damage off of a grenade kill or five weapon kills. But the, the big kicker with Adrenaline Junkie is that 
Um, yes, it pairs well with demo, but the duration is really, really short. And there are other weapons that stack up to 33% or even higher that are better with grenades. And we're going to mention those later on in the higher tiers of this video. But Adrenaline Junkie, unfortunately, I'm going to place it in the C tier. I know that might be a bit of a surprise, but it's really, really short duration. And, you know, you can get grenade kills relatively easy. But again, I'm going to say that there are better perks higher up in this tier list that I think work better with demo builds, even if they currently don't exist in in today's sandbox in there with, with that combination, I should say. Okay, next up we have Air Assault. Now, um, something about this tier list, um, the F tier is basically going to be explicitly PvP perks, okay? I think it's a little bit unfair to put PvP perks and kind of rank them against PvE perks. Air Assault is obviously designed to be a PvP perk, even if it's not a very good one. Now, within the F tier, I'm still going to rank uh, PvP perks. I'm going to put the ones that are, you know, theoretically better for PvE if you were forced to use them uh, above the ones that are worse. So Air Assault, it is going to be our first uh, F tier pick and it's going to rank 162nd, which is near the very bottom of the list. Like I said, there's 165 perks in this game, and it's basically just an AE perk. Okay, next up, we are going to talk about Ambitious Assassin. So Ambitious Assassin, um, I think most people are familiar with this perk on weapons like Salvager Salvo and Forbearance. Unfortunately, besides that, its effect is not very good. Um, you know, getting, uh, you know, overflow off of a kill reload, it's, it's all right. It's a decent perk, but it's really only strong on weapons that have a very small mag size, like a single shot mag, for example, grenade launchers, or maybe like rocket launchers. Um, but you know, besides that, it's not an insane effect. You have envious assassin, which I would argue is a much stronger perk overflows much higher. And, uh, it's based on kills rather than kill reloads on other weapons. So I would say Ambitious Assassin is another solid C tier perk. I think we ranked it 52nd, which is going to place it right above, squeaks it right above Adaptive Munitions, which is in fact 53rd. All right, next up we have Archer's Tempo. Archer's Tempo is the most important, arguably, bow perk. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this perk because when I use bows, I use them to stun overloads with overload bow, or basically I'm swapping to the bow to shoot it quickly and swap off. That being said, if you have a bow and you need to repeatedly shoot enemies, whether it's one single enemy that you need to shoot multiple times or clear a bunch of adds, Archer's Tempo is one of the most important perks on a bow, especially because it deals with draw time instead of reload, which is very, very important uh, stat-wise on a bow. That being said, like I mentioned, because Archer's Tempo is really forcing you to play around a legendary primary, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the, in the C tier, right? It's a, it's a pretty decent perk, pretty important for bows, but compared to some of the stuff you're going to see in the S, A, and B tiers, it does not, it definitely doesn't get to hang out up there. Okay, next up we have Assassin's Blade. Assassin's Blade is basically a 15% damage perk. Let me uh, scroll down a little bit. Yeah, it's basically a 15% damage perk on sword kill. And the only thing that's unique about this perk is it's one of the only options in the game that actually allows you to set your movement speed at a certain level. And nine meters per second is actually quite high. And it could be useful in some encounters where you're burdened. So if you wanted to kill something and then maybe pick up a relic and move at a fixed amount of speed, Assassin's Blade can be useful for that. Now, that being said, in end game content are you going to be you know picking up an object and having an assassin's blade sword and killing an enemy just to get that effect temporarily not really so i'm going to go ahead and put that thing in the d tier it's going to be our first d tier perk at rank 91 pretty niche but i wouldn't say it's completely useless and you get a built-in 15 percent damage perk as well which is not horrible even though it does imply that you are roaming and kind of ad clearing with a sword Okay, next up we have Auto Loading Holster. Now, Auto Loading Holster is, you know, a really, really great perk. Uh, if you're an end game player, you are swapping between your weapons very frequently. If you see end game players play optimally, you're gonna see them switch between their weapons, use all three weapons kind of balanced. And Auto Loading Holster really, really helps play into that. And like I say in, you know, a lot of other videos on this channel, you know, having a perk that reloads your weapon and doesn't just assist you in manually reloading, but just refills it for you in the background is fantastic. And of course, auto loading holster is like the quintessential example of that. So that being said, this perk has kind of been overshadowed by Envious and Reconstruction recently. And a lot of weapons are not getting auto loading holster that, you know, compared to in the past where a lot of weapons would get auto loading holster. Now a lot of them are getting reconstruction and envious. So we haven't had a lot of time to kind of see this perk shine recently. However, auto loading holster is still pretty useful and I'm going to go ahead and place it in the A tier. It's going to be our first A tier perk ranked 14th out of our massive 165 total. 
Next up, we have Backup Plan. Now, Backup Plan is essentially a PvP perk. Uh, it's designed to reduce the charge time on your fusion rifle. A lot of people use it on high impacts in PvP. Uh, it's very good for that. Now, that being said, um, you know, it does technically increase your DPS on a fusion rifle for a short period of time, but it's kind of like Adagio, but it works in reverse. So it decreases your charge time, but it also decreases your damage. So for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and put backup plan in the high section of the F tier at rank 138. It is one of the better PVP perks because it does actually increase damage in a PVE instance. But that being said, it's uh, certainly not anything special and it's definitely going to stay in the F tier. Okay, next up we have bait and switch. Now bait and switch, monstrous perk. I'm sure everybody knows where this perk is going to go. Uh, there is basically no perk in the game that for no kills not even precision hits, just shooting all three of your weapons, which is something endgame players do all the time, you get a 35% damage increase, which is massive, right? It's not conditional, it's just 35 flat, and you get it for 11 seconds if it's enhanced, which is absolutely ridiculous. The only bad thing about this perk is that you can't reproc it while that timer is going down, but most endgame players are aware of this. They can play around that timer effectively. This thing is great basically anywhere you can pack it, you can do it in DPS, you can use it on the Crotazen machine gun in like a GM. This thing is absolutely fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and put Bane Switch in the S tier, solidly near the top of S tier. It's actually ranked second out of the 165 perks that we have today in this list. And uh, yeah, we're going to move on to our next perk, which is Barrel Constrictor. Barrel Constrictor is a PvP perk. Uh, it's not a very good one as far as I know. I've talked to some of my PvP friends and they don't seem to think it's very good. First of all, it requires you to actually get a kill first. It's not a passive perk. Uh, if it was completely passive and didn't require you to get any kills, it would definitely just improve shotgun performance over the board. It might even be decent in PvE for a one to one shotgun. But the fact that you need to get a kill with the shotgun first makes it so that this perk is absolutely horrendous in PvE. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the bottom of F tier at rank 157, above air assault and below backup plan. Next up, we have Bipod. Now, Bipod, in my opinion, outside of that day one video where I recommended Bipod uh, for the upcoming day one raid encounters for boss DPS, I don't think it's very good for boss DPS. In fact, I don't think you should use it for boss DPS outside of a scenario like that, where it can double as an ad clear option for mini bosses and also for boss DPS in lingering longer extended phases. Now, that being said, Bipod is phenomenal in GMs. Bipod is basically clown cartridge on crack. Now, the thing about rockets is that the biggest restriction with rockets is that unless you have a constant flow of ammo coming into your inventory, you're going to run out of ammo pretty quickly. So you have to be very efficient with how you use your rockets. And one of the biggest problem with rockets is that one rocket is usually overkill for killing stuff like red bars, big groups of red bars in even a GM. So Bipod takes this problem and divides it. You have more rockets and they shoot faster, but you don't have to waste as many. If you just want to kill a bunch of red bars, you can basically waste, you know, half the rockets, right? And, you, you know, you, instead of shooting you know one rocket you can just you know sorry instead of shooting uh, a clown cartridge rocket you can just shoot a bipod rocket and you use less of your total ammo reserves so bipod is really great for that it also basically acts like you know intrinsic clown cartridge without any like requirement um it works well with reconstruction overall just a great perk um you know i can't say you know enough good about this perk so i'm going to go ahead and put bipod solidly in the a tier it's going to be ranked 11th which is going to place it above auto loading holster Okay, next up we have Blunt Execution Rounds. Now, Blunt Execution Rounds, I'm sure it's kind of flown under the radar for a lot of people because this perk is basically restricted to like, I think one weapon or maybe two weapons, like the Battler Pulse. Um, that being said, what it does is you do melee damage to an enemy that's kind of close to you, and then you have six times, you have a 6x damage perk, which is insanely high for just one burst of your pulse rifle. So... I haven't really used this perk that much. I can't really speak to how much damage that is. You could probably burst down a major pretty quickly with it. But um, this thing is very, very niche, ex extremely situational. And for the most part, if you're using a melee build, most of your damage is going to be coming from your melee and not from a pulse rifle. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing somewhere near the top of E tier. It's definitely better than Adagio, but it's definitely worse than some of the perks that are going to be in the D tier. So I'm going to go ahead and place that right over here. It's going to be ranked 117. And we are going to move on to Bottomless Grief. So Bottomless Grief, um, you know, some of these perks get hated on because they're kind of like solo only perks, but um, this is probably the best one that there is. 
Um, Huckleberry has, you know, a form of subsistence that reloads your whole mag on one kill, and Bottomless Grief gives you that if you're solo. So compared to a perk like Celerity where you have, you know, maxed out reload, maxed out handling, I think Bottomless Grief provides something that no other perk really does. It's like basically five times better than Enhanced Subsistence from what I understand. It's not a portion of your mag, it's your full mag. So Bottomless Grief is definitely very useful. That being said, the selection of weapons that it rolls on is not very large. Um, but it does also have a passive mag size benefit as well, which a lot of people I think overlook. So I'm going to go ahead and put Bottomless Grief in the D tier, mostly because it's a solo only perk. And the, you know, e even considering its effect, it's not like insanely good. It's not a make or break perk by any means. So I've ranked that 82nd, which I believe is going to place it. Uh, let me go ahead and take a look. That's going to place it right above Assassin's Blade. And we're going to move on to Box Breathing. Okay, box breathing is, you know, it, it got nerfed a while ago. Uh, it's definitely not what it used to be. Uh, Whisper breathing on Whisper the Worm is obviously very good, but box breathing only really applies for one shot. And box breathing, unfortunately, if you do the math on stuff like linears, it is around a 30% damage increase from what I understand for just one shot. And we're talking about weapons that roll Firing Line, that roll Bane Switch, that roll Focus Fury, all perks that have much better uptime total, even if you're just going for burst damage. And of course, on the weapons where box breathing is the best, the highest per shot weapons, like for example, aggressive frame snipers and linear fusion rifles, you're not really going to be using those weapons for burst damage, right? Something like recombination would be a lot better as well. So box breathing, pretty bad perk. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the E tier. Um, I didn't necessarily put it in the F tier because it's not really just a PvP perk, even though a lot of people use it that way. I think it used to be kind of intended for PvE as well. But I'm going to go ahead and place it in the top section of E tier uh, above Blunt Execution Rounds at rank 110. Okay, next up we have Cascade Point. Cascade Point, Bungie, recently I've kind of criticized them a little bit because a lot of their perks have been very lackluster, not very innovative or a little bit too convoluted to get going. Cascade Point is one of the perks that Bungie's made recently that I think is fantastic. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It doesn't become too overbearing. It doesn't increase your total damage, but in exchange, it gives you essentially a 66% DPS increase without increasing your total damage. So it's a perfect trade-off perk. Uh, you have very, very high DPS, but you decrease your time to empty per mag, and you also don't buff your total damage. So Cascade Point is perfect for burst DPS on something like a heavy GL, or even on the Crotas and Machine Gun, I think it's kind of interesting on that as well. So Cascade Point is a fantastic perk, great on shotguns as well, can't believe I forgot to mention shotguns. Um, it is absolutely fantastic for burst damage, it turns shotguns into like mini horsemen, it turns GLs into like, you know, mini bipod rockets. Uh, pretty, pretty insane perk. I think it's very, very underrated, and I hope people continue to use it and mess with it in the future um, as we get more and more into Destiny's Year 6. Uh, so I, I, I went ahead, I put Cascade Point at the top of A tier. Uh, it's ranked 10th, and we're going we're gonna to plunk it right over there. Okay, next up we have Celerity. So Celerity, I did mention when I was talking about Bottomless Grief. Uh, Celerity is, I believe, a Trials-related perk. And basically what it does is if you're solo, you get 100 handling and 100 reload. It maxes the important PvE stats, which is really, really great. And also grants you a free 20 handling and reload speed for doing nothing. So that's actually pretty good. I wouldn't say it's better than Bottomless Grief because this is a stat buff, not a unique effect. But I didn't place it that far below. We're going to go ahead and rank it 86th, which I believe is going to place it above Assassin's Blade, but below Bottomless Grief. Okay, next up we have Chain Reaction. Chain Reaction, I did underrate, I'll be honest, I did underrate it a little bit at the start of this tier list, and then I was kind of thinking about it, and I was like, you know, Chain Reaction might only be on explosive weapons, but it's obviously very good on Forbearance, very good on Salvo, and if they ever did decide to give it to something like a machine gun, oh my god, Chain Reaction would be absolutely insane, right? So Chain Reaction, it basically makes it so that each one of your shots are more efficient, they do splash damage. You know, if you want to make the argument that something like Incandescent acts like a damage perk because it splashes the enemies around it, you can make that same argument for Chain Reaction, except Chain Reaction is even more potent, more explosive than something like Incandescent. And uh, I think that really gets to the heart of the matter. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and place Chain Reaction in the B tier. We're going to place it in the B tier. Uh, and yeah, it's going to be our first B -tier, uh, B tier weapon perk. Okay, next up we have Chill Clip. So Chill Clip, I know a lot of people have said that Chill Clip kind of fell fell off, you know, because you can't two burst unstops anymore with Riptide. That being said, I personally never really use Chill Clip on unstops because it takes a, a long time to shoot an unstop twice and then wait for it to shatter or shatter it manually. So I was never really a fan of using Riptide to stun unstops to begin with. That being said, it still stuns overloads. And for example, this season you have Unstop Fusion Rifle, which allows Riptide to cover two champ types, which I think is still very nice. 
Um, it's essentially like a hit scan overload option that's legendary, which I think is still very, very useful. And Chill Clip itself is a pretty decent perk just in general to have on a fusion rifle. And if ever we get other weapons in the kinetic slot or I guess stasis weapons uh, that have Chill Clip or maybe even, you know, power weapons that get Chill Clip that are even better, you know, you could see this perk, uh, you know, get some a rise in the stonks, a rise in the stonks. So Chill Clip, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the A tier. Uh, it's definitely, you know, sort of in the middle of the A tier. Uh, I think I placed it directly underneath auto loading holster and we're going to move on to close to melee. So close to melee is a glaive melee damage perk. Uh, essentially what you do is you get a glaive projectile kill and then as long as you keep doing either projectile or melee damage, you get an infinite 30% glaive melee damage increase. So this is basically the only glaive perk that is useful for doing spam melee builds. And I think next season with the Syntheseps changes, um, you could see some glaive melee builds start to re-emerge and be possibly useful in endgame content. Now, I'm not saying that that is by itself enough to bring this perk up, you know, a bunch of tiers, but, uh, you know, it's worth mentioning, and I think close to melee, if, if we evaluate the perk just on its own, it is a 30% infinite damage perk, essentially, which uh, I think, you know, it deserves credit for if we're following the, you know, vacuum independent perk power thing that I was talking about earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the C tier around the perks that are like Archer's Tempo. I think it's very, very essential for Glaives for melee damage builds and um, just reviewing it in a vacuum, ignoring, you know, how good or bad Glaive melee damage is in the current sandbox. I think it is very essential as a perk by itself. So we're going to go ahead and rank it 49th, which I believe is below Archer's Tempo, but above Ambitious Assassin. Okay, next up we have Clown Cartridge. Clown Cartridge in my opinion, it's kind of like Ambitious Assassin, it's just a slightly better version. I think both Clown Cartridge and Ambitious Assassin are really only good on weapons that have a single shot mag. Uh, on any weapon that is larger mag than that, like an SMG or a Pulse Rifle or something like that, you are much, much, much better off using a different perk. So with that being said, Clown Cartridge and Ambitious basically do the same thing on weapons like single shot grenade launchers because you're not really going to get a 3 mag forbearance the vast majority of the time in endgame content, and Clown Cartridge doesn't require a kill. Like imagine if you got, would you rather have Clown Cartridge or Ambitious on Forbearance? Obviously you'd rather have Clown Cartridge. So I'm going to go ahead and put Clown directly above Ambitious one rank higher because they do essentially the same thing I think in today's endgame sandbox and Clown Cartridge is ranked 51st. Okay, next up we have Cluster Bomb. Uh, cluster Bomb, um, I initially underrated this because I think Cluster is pretty bad and you're, you're pretty much never going to use Cluster. The Clusters themselves do very little damage. They shoot very erratically. They don't buff wolf packs. They are basically, you know, baby's first steps to wolf pack rounds so you know you'd basically much better off using any other rocket damage perk that's not cluster bomb even like lasting i would take over cluster in most instances but that being said it's not the worst thing in the world i wouldn't put it in the e tier uh, i'm gonna go ahead and put it in the d tier and i'm gonna go ahead and rank it 78th which uh, if i'm not mistaken is a little bit above bottomless grief yeah a little bit above bottomless grief okay next up we have cold steel now cold steel this weapon perk, I really had to, uh, this was probably the biggest outlier because swords are really, sh you know, struggling in the meta right now outside of being used for Crota DPS, but Cold Steel itself is a very good perk. You can light heavy stun and unstop. You can instantly light stun and overload. It's like pre-nerf chill clip, except it's on swords, which shoot, shoot, I guess hit faster than a fusion rifle can. Now that being said, in endgame content, are you likely to go up to an unstoppable champion and start hitting it with a sword? No, it's going to stomp you and kill you. So Cold Steel is not that good, but I think it's still a very unique perk and it does something, it brings something to the table that I would say no other perk for swords does. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the C tier. It's kind of towards the bottom of the C tier. I've ranked it 64th, which I think puts it above Adrenaline Junkie, but below Adaptive Munitions, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that is correct. Okay, next up we have Collective Action. Now, Collective Action is a 20% damage perk whenever you pick up a subclass related item. So for example, a Fire Sprite or a Tangle or anything like that. Now, that being said, all of these items have internal cooldowns with, with, you know, you can only make them every X number of seconds. So you kind of need to be picking up these items very, very frequently at, at their internal cooldown limit in order to have this perk be active as much as you want. And for having that requirement of having, you know, needing to go over to an enemy that you've killed, pick up a fire spray, pick up a tangle, whatever it is, 20% uh, is not as much as I would have liked to see. There are other perks that are 20% for basically free. Uh, I'm thinking stuff like paracausal affinity, for example. So this is too, a little too situational in my opinion. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, collective action in the D tier. We're going to put in the D tier. And I think I've gone ahead and placed it 
uh, underneath Cluster Bomb, but above Bottomless Grief. Okay, next up we have Compulsive Reloader. Now, Compulsive Reloader, I think they buffed it. I, I might be wrong here. I think they buffed it so that it doesn't scale down to 50% of your mag. At least how it is right now, anytime you're above half mag with a gun with Compulsive Reloader, you get a free 50 reload and a reload duration multiplier scaler, right? And that's really high. If you know how much reload a lot of other perks give to you, that's actually a lot of reload. So if you're using weapons that are, for example, good for stunning champions, you're only going to shoot them really quickly just one time, and then you're going to maybe reload and swap off. Compulsive is great for that. Now, that being said, is that a really, really good use case for a stun primary? No, because you can just use auto loading or, you know, another perk like demo that reloads your gun for you instead of having to use compulsive reloader. Because like I say all the time, I always prefer perks that reload or refill in the background rather than forcing you to buff your manual reload speed because manual reload speed always has an animation cap, right? So compulsive reloader is good, right? Is good for that small instance. But of course, something like auto loading would probably be better overall. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the D tier and that's going to place it right below Assassin's Blade, if I'm not mistaken, at rank 92. Okay, next up we have controlled burst. Now controlled burst, another example of an actually good perk that Bungie introduced semi-recently um fusion rifles have been needing a good damage perk for a while now fusion rifles in general like i said i'm not going to penalize controlled burst for being on a weak archetype of weapon or type of weapon but um you know in terms of you know dps perks fusion rifles is, is as good as it gets right you know controlled burst you don't need any kills you don't even need any specific type of you know hits you don't need to you know do anything special you just need to hit all your bolts which if you're using a fusion rifle i sure hope you're hitting all your bolts right so uh controlled burst i went ahead and put it in the b tier uh, I placed it above Chain Reaction, uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. This thing is basically like a 30-ish percent DPS increase for basically free. Um, you don't need to be above 100% mag like Reservoir Burst. You just got to shoot your Fusion Rifle. That's it. Only the first shot isn't buffed. So very, very simple, very straightforward, very, good, very, very good perk, um, fundamentally speaking. Okay, next up we have Cornered. Speaking of Fusion Rifle only perks, uh, this one is at the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, cornered basically requires you to meet the requirements of the Surrounded perk, except for it is nowhere near a 47% damage increase. Instead, it offers you a 15% reduction in your charge time, which is not a very high DPS increase. And Cornered also tends to sit in the column that contains Envious Assassin, which is much, 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 much more important than something like a charge time, a minor charge time reduction on fusion rifles so if you're working with something like cornered surrounded on a fusion rifle you're sacrificing your mag size when you could be loading your entire reserves into one mag instead you are playing with a slightly faster charge time which ends up being not that much of a dps increase overall because you're forced to reload even if you use something like arena fire so i'm gonna go ahead and put cornered in the the e tier we're gonna go ahead and put in the e tier it's ranked 125th which i believe places it underneath dajo all right, next up we have counterattack. Now counterattack, listen, I tried to give this uh, sword perk a chance. I was using it on Crota. I was doing some DPS testing with some friends because we are speedrunning Crota, of course. And uh, I wanted to give it a chance, right? I wanted to give it a chance, uh, see if we could maybe block Crota sword attacks and then go in for some sword attacks. But uh, it's really, really annoying to use. You have to block within 0.5 seconds of, you know, the damage has to come in 0.5 seconds of within you being hit. And um, it only lasts two seconds, and it's just it's just really annoying to use. I don't really think it's worth using. Um, and if you if you actually test the numbers, uh, even for something like Black Talon, which has a similar version of Counterattack in the form of Reversal, it's actually either minimal DPS gain or DPS loss taking the time to block. So you know it's really just not worth using. I'm gonna go ahead and put Counterattack in the D tier. 50% is a big chunk of damage, but uh, it's certainly not enough to make it like a usable perk in my opinion. So. We're going to go ahead and put that at the bottom of D tier rank 104, and we're going to move on to Danger Zone. Okay, so Danger Zone basically maxes your blast radius if you're near enemies, and it also reduces self damage. Now, you know, that sounds decent. You know, blast radius is pretty important for stuff like rockets and stuff like grenade launchers. That being said, the only problem is, is number one, Danger Zone doesn't increase your damage at all right? Something like Explosive Light maxes your blast radius, but also increases your damage by 25%. And number two, Wolfpack rounds exist, and you shouldn't be using grenade launchers to clear ads to begin with. So I'm going to go ahead and put Danger Zone in the E tier. There is pretty much no reason to use this perk in PvE, in my opinion, and it's going to be ranked 120, which I believe places it... Uh, where does this thing go? I think it's underneath Box Breathing... Uh, and underneath blunt execution rounds, but above Adagio, if I'm not mistaken. And we're going to move on to Demolitionist. Okay, Demolitionist. 
Very, very important perk. Um, a lot of people are very, very familiar with this perk. Has two effects. Number one, you get a kill with it. It gives you some grenade energy back depending on the weapon type. And number two, on a three second internal cooldown, if you use your grenade, it refills your mag, right? Now, um, this is very good. Right? It is one of the easiest simulated reload options in the game that doesn't require you to manual reload. It also gives you a lot of grenade energy on a lot of popular weapon types like fusion rifles, snipers, etc. So it's very, very useful. It's useful in speedrunning. It's useful in some damage rotations. Um, that being said, with the downfall of Starfire and the downfall of grenade rotations in general, Demo has seen a bit of a scale back in terms of how relevant it is in endgame PvE, but I'm not going to deny it from being a solid weapon option, especially on something like a machine gun. So we're going to go ahead and place it in the S tier, it is ranked 8th, and we're going to move on to Desperado. Okay, so Desperado, Desperado is a decent perk actually. A lot of people see this as a PvP perk and obviously a lot of people are familiar with being, you know, being on Redrixes and Messenger, but I think it is, it is usable in PvE. It doesn't deserve to be in the F tier with the other PvP perks. This thing actually amounts to about a 40% DPS increase for primaries, which if you look at a lot of the other perks that people like on primaries like Frenzy, 15%, and you know, Kill Clip, you know, 25-ish percent, Rampage, Max out 33%, this is not a bad perk, right? Like 40% DPS increase, it decreases your time to empty mag, but like, not bad, right? Not bad. It does require precision kill, but you know, you're getting precision kills with primaries. It's not horrible. Uh, I'm not going to say this thing is fantastic by any stretch, but I'm not going to place it in the E tier or in the F tier. So we're going to go ahead and place it in the D tier. Um, I'm going to go ahead and place it, I believe, above Cluster Bomb. Yeah, above Cluster Bomb, it's ranked 75th. Okay, next up we have Destabilizing Rounds. Destabilizing rounds, um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with it being used in the world's first solo Flawless Fog, in solo gatekeepers, uh, you can snipe an ad next to the Minotaur, get him volatile, and break his shield. Uh, but how does it fare in your average endgame content? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't give you volatile rounds to your weapons, and the volatile explosion isn't that potent, and volatile itself doesn't interact that well with subclasses compared to something like Incandescent, right? So it also has this internal cooldown that's very, very long compared to something like Incandescent where you can just scorch all day non-stop. So Destabilizing Rounds definitely suffers in that department compared to something like Incandescent or even something like Headstone. So I'm going to go ahead and put Destabilizing Rounds in the C tier. Uh, we're going to rank it 55th, and I believe that places it underneath Adaptive Munitions but above Cold Steel. Okay, my voice is getting there. It's <laughs> We're moving, we're moving. Okay, next up we have Discord. So Discord... Oh. I seem to have scrolled up by accident, my bad. Uh, Discord, I think, is very underrated. It's one of the newer perks, but I think it's actually very good. So the way Discord works, um, I would say ignore it on primary weapons, but on special weapons, uh, it's very good. And the way that it works is you can kill an enemy with another weapon and then switch to a Discord special weapon. And as long as you get one kill per shot, you get infinite ammo. It just continuously refunds ammo, right? So... Discord is one of those perks that I kind of stated at the beginning of the video. It's a very good perk, but it hasn't been given itself, it hasn't been given enough time to shine on really good weapons. If we ever got a fusion rifle with Discord Reservoir Burst, or if we ever got an like an aggressive shotgun with Discord, or even a rapid fire shotgun with Discord, or like any, literally any special weapon that is good at killing enemies. Dude, if we got a wave frame with Discord, that would be absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. It would be mind-blowingly good, right? That would easily revive double special with waveframes up to the top of endgame content. So Discord is a very, very good perk. I'm just waiting to see what Bungie decides to put it on, what special weapons specifically Bungie decides to put them on. So with that in mind, I placed Discord in the C tier. Um, I don't know what Bungie's design intentions are with it at this point, but we're going to go ahead and place it right underneath Archer's Tempo and above CTM and move on. Next up, we have Disruption Break. Now, Disruption Break, I know a lot of you guys were, were getting on my ass about this perk and you were like, oh my god, it's so good, you know, uh, it's so good, I can use like a GL to break a bunch of ads shields and, you know, they take more damage from my kinetic ammo. So, real quick, okay, <clears throat> Disruption Break would be good, it would be good, if Anti-Barrier Energy Primaries and Izanagi's Burden were still meta, but they're not. They're not meta for GMs anymore, and the only thing I think Disruption Break is good for is... Bosses that have infinitely regenerating energy shields, which is literally just Novota at this point, right? It's literally just Novota. There's basically no other boss in the game that regenerates an energy shield. And number two, um, like on Arbalist, right? On Arbalist, but I'm not counting exotics, right? Archer's Tempo wasn't ranked with Leviathan's Breath in mind, and neither is Ar neither is Disruption Brink going to be ranked with Arbalist in mind. It's obviously good on Arbalist because it's self procs. But there are very rare instances in today's sandbox where you are breaking an energy shield and then doing kinetic damage. You're going to be doing power damage, right? 
So Disruption Break, really, really, you know, overrated in my opinion by at least some of the people in the comment section. I'm going to go ahead and put it at the top of D tier and we're going to rank it, I believe, 71st. Okay, next up we have Dragonfly. Now, Dragonfly, um, you know, it's not bad, right? I mean, Reconstruction Dragonfly uh, commemoration back in the day was a bit of a slapper, a bit of a slapper, I can't lie. Um, but I think Dragonfly, you know, it's it's kind of overshadowed by some other perks like Firefly, etc. Um, it's not bad. That being said, it's definitely one of those perks that's kind of like Chain Reaction where it increases the efficiency of your ammo, um, which, I you know, I think is a good thing. And, um, you know, if you show me a primary with Dragonfly, I wouldn't be too upset. So I'm going to go ahead and put Dragonfly in the C tier. I think it's just a middling decent perk. And we're going to go ahead and place it underneath Adaptive Munitions and call it at that. Okay, next up we have Dual Loader. Uh, Dual Loader is... Um, Dual Loader is pretty bad. <laughs> Dual Loader is pretty bad. It's basically exclusive to shotguns. And technically speaking, right, Dual Loader does increase the net reload speed of shotguns. But on shotguns, the vast majority of the time, you're using perks like Grave Robber, like Demo, like, like uh, you know, Auto Loading Holster, like Envious. Like, there's plenty of perks that you're going to use on a shotgun way before you ever resort to manually reloading it with Dual Loader. So I'll save you the time. I'll save myself the time. We're going to put this thing near the bottom of E tier and leave it there to suffer at rank 133. Okay, next up we have Duelist Trance. Now, Duelist Trance, a lot of you guys, you know, tend to ask me, you know, why do you have Duelist Trance on your Egret Sword? Um, I don't know, that's a good question. Um, but to like answer about what Duelist Trance does, Duelist Trance is a bit unique because it is one of the only perks in the game where you can get a kill with it and then it lasts indefinitely until you stow your weapon. There are very few perks like that, you know, Killing Tally comes to mind. But swords, for example, if we ever get a sword that has a very low charge rate, but would be good for DPS with a charge rate buff, Lucent Blades isn't enough to bring something like a 20 charge rate sword up to its max charge rate. So Duelist Trance, actually, if you get a single add kill and then don't stow your sword, you get 60 charge rate indefinitely. Right? And it also obviously buffs your guard efficiency stats and stuff like that, which is kind of nice. Uh, it makes it for like a roaming perk. Um, but again, unfortunately, Duelist Trance is also in the same column as stuff like Relentless Strikes, which tends to be super, super essential for sword gameplay. So Duelist Trance, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I did, I did just tell you that it could have some use in the future for like, you know, burst damage on swords or whatever. But for now, definitely a non-starter, I would say, uh, not meta on any sword right now, as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the E tier. Um, and we're going to place it, I believe, above Dual Loader, but below Cornered at rank 129. Okay, next up we have Dynamic Sway Reduction. So Dynamic Sway Reduction, DSR, this is a PvP perk, right? This is a PvP perk, let's not get it twisted. However, it's not a bad PvP perk for PvE on something like a Machine Gun or maybe like a Trace or like a Primary. It does keep your weapon very stable, which can, uh, I guess, increase the consistency of your weapon in some way. Obviously, it's not going to escape the F tier for that reason, but we're going to put it kind of in the higher section of the F tier because uh, some of the F tier perks are, are really, really bad, right? So I think it does positively affect your gameplay, even if it's not significant whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and rank it at 141, and we're going to place it underneath Backup Plan and move on to Eager Edge. Now, Eager Edge, this one might be a little bit controversial, right? I am a speedrunner, so I'm, I, I guess I'm a little bit biased towards Eager Edge, but I talk to a lot of endgame players, and we all agree. Eager Edge, best perk in the game, <laughs> no doubt about it. Eager Edge has changed the face of the game so much so, and it's such an easy to access movement option that it changes how people play in GMs. It opened up an entire avenue of speedrunning in GMs. Um, it is a fantastic perk. It gets you in and out of danger, even in end game content. And with the sword buff, even an Eager Edge sword that's not like an aggressive frame or you don't need stronghold, it's, it can still block in a pinch. And uh, it's on adaptive frame swords, which do decent damage as well. So Eager Edge, it's it's just a fantastic sword. I mean, if you care about being an endgame player, a lot of endgame players, Destiny is not a very hard game. So a lot of endgame players like to challenge themselves by going faster. So I would say Eager Edge deserves to be at the top spot. Obviously, you can argue this down. If you're not a speedrunner, you're not a speedrunner type. You just like doing really hard content. Eager Edge is probably going to rank a lot lower for you. But I put it in the S tier. I didn't really know how to rank this perk. I mean... It's kind of its own perk. It's a unique perk. It doesn't really belong on the tier list, but you understand what I'm saying. I wanted to put it somewhere, so I put it in the top spot, S tier. Makes sense. Okay, let's move on to another a perk that's probably on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. We have Eddy Current, okay? Eddy Current, um, this is Bungie going, you know, why don't, why don't we try something quirky, right? Why don't we, you know, you, you know that gun, Centrifuge? Why don't, we, why don't we try to do that, but in a perk, right? And um, needless to say, this experiment did not work very well because the way Eddy Current works is you sprint for a bit and then after sprinting for a bit, if you stop and reload, you get some reload speed. You get a little bit of reload buff, okay? The reload buff is not very large, number one. And number two, that's just not how most people play. Most people, they finish an engagement, they reload their guns, and then they sprint. 
they don't not reload their guns and then sprint and then stop and then reload their gun like who is doing that and the duration is very short it's only three seconds so you can't even make the excuse that you would stop you would shoot an enemy and then you would reload because engagements typically last longer than three seconds so you know eddy current it's it's definitely very questionable uh I, I don't really know where you would ever use this i'm gonna go ahead and rank it in the e tier it's just kind of a counterintuitive perk and the benefits that you get from the perk itself are not enough to force you to change your way around how you play. So I'm going to go ahead and rank it 126, which is going to place it right underneath the corner, the corner perk right there. And we're going to move on to ECAP. Now, ECAP, you could argue, is a PvP perk, but uh, it does increase two of the most important stats in PvE by a lot, right? It's 50. And it's basically passive because if you're playing a subclass, you're playing a subclass, right? You don't have to do anything. Now, that being said, um, is it like absolutely insane? No. And it does force you to play a specific subclass. And can you get 50 reload or something close to 50 reload with another perk that doesn't require you to play a specific subclass? Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and place Elemental Capacitor uh, in the D tier. It's going to be ranked 89th. And we're going to place it behind Celerity. Where's Celerity? Sorry, this is a mess. I There's so many perks here and my brain is going to be fried by the end of this, but we'll move on. Next up, we have On Guard. Um, On Guard is a pretty interesting perk. Um, I wanted to design sword swapping around this perk. So a lot of people were complaining, for example, that, you know, uh, Surrounded is inconsistent on Bequest. You know, it's annoying for Bequest on Kuroda. So I was like, okay, On Guard, you can pull out a sword and you get a 30% damage buff for a couple seconds. That sounds pretty good, right? Because if, if it reactivates every time you pull out your sword, you could do some crazy shotgun swapping with it, like Heart Shadow, like, like kind of the, the strat that I made with that. And it might be pretty good on Crota, right? And theoretically, if you could do it and on guard proc every time you pulled out your sword, it would be good. However, it sucks, okay? It has an invisible internal cooldown. I think the buff duration acts as an internal cooldown. And you can't reproc the perk while the timer is still going down, which is extremely annoying. It is very, very, very annoying. Um, you can't use the thing for sword swapping, and I can't imagine why you'd want to use it in like a roaming context, because usually with swords, it takes more than just one swing to kill something, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put on guard uh, in the in the D tier. It's going to be ranked 93rd, and I'm going to place that right beneath, I believe, Compulsive Reloader, which is ranked 92nd. Yes, sir. Okay, next up we have Encore. Uh, Encore is a PvP perk, no doubt about that. I don't think anybody has any doubt about that. So that's going to go in the F tier. However, um, you know, it's definitely one of the worst PvP perks when it comes to using them in PvE. It's focused on buffing range and stability and your accuracy cone. So none of those are really important in PvE. So I'm going to go ahead and rank it 159th. Not much to say about this one. And we're going to put it above Air Assault, I believe, but below Barrel Constrictor. Yes, sir. Okay, next up we have uh energy transfer yeah energy transfer uh energy transfer is actually pretty cool i think this is an underrated perk unfortunately the energy that it is transferred uh it goes to your least useful ability which is your class ability on hunters this thing is percentage based so you know your dodge is already a fast cooldown this is not going to help that much your barricade on titan is typically not very useful and on warlock your rift is pretty helpful and you know rifts are the longest cooldown class ability so this is arguably percentage wise the most efficient perk you know, it's not that important, right? There are other ways to get your class ability much faster. I don't think energy transfer is particularly useful. I, I like the perk in concept. It's a cool concept, I won't lie. But is it useful? Not really. I'm not going to put it in the E tier because I think it does serve some purpose, but that purpose is very out of the way. So we're going to rank it 83rd and I'm going to place it right below bottom of the screen. Right there, boom. Okay, next up we have Enlightened Action. Enlightened Action is one of the newer perks, and I think it's actually pretty good. Uh, Enlightened Action, in my opinion, is like essentially a rapid hit equivalent that buffs your reload less, but doesn't require precision hits. So if you're a sloppier player or you happen to be shooting a bunch of shanks, Enlightened Action will be a better option than something like uh, Rapid Hit. That being said, I did rank it a tiny bit, like one rank below Rapid Hit, uh, only because you know, it is a slightly worse reload duration buff. Uh, and I guess rapid hit has a little bit of stability thrown in there as well. So enlightened action, basically the same thing as rapid hit. Pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the C tier ranked 48. And I believe that places it right above close to melee. Yeah, right above close to melee. That is correct. Okay, next up we have ensemble. Uh, ensemble, I think, is another underrated perk. I think a lot of people view this as a PvP perk, but this is certainly good enough to be a PvE perk as well. You only need to be within 15 meters of an ally. So as long as you're not doing solo content, you are going to be within 15 meters of an ally, like most of the time, right? That's like two max shotgun kill distances. That's, that's you know, it's a decent distance, right? 
and um, you get 30 handling and 40 reload speed. That's pretty high, right? Those are two very important perks in PvE. Uh, this can be useful for hot swapping uh, on, on some, you know, snipers and stuff like that. And um, just for general weapons and, you know, just like a shotgun even, um, it's just a nice weapon to have. It's a, a nice weapon perk to have. It's not, you know, great. And it's not very independent, and there are certainly better perks, but I wouldn't call it a complete write-off. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the C tier. Uh, we're going to rank it 63rd, which places it right above Cold Steel, I believe. And we're going to move on to Envious Assassin. Envious Assassin is also a semi-recent perk added to Destiny 2, and I actually like Envious Assassin a lot. We've needed a strong overflow perk that is more based on kills than it is based on ammo pickups and stuff like that. Uh, stuff like clan cartridge overflow etc so i think envious assassin really really filled that niche very well and um it's very good now that being said it is currently apparently bugged to allow for plus 250 percent overflow rather than you know 150 percent um so that allows you to get something like four cold comfort shots in your mag instead of three which is pretty insane um that being said if that gets patched envious assassin will likely drop a tier but for now we're going to put it in the s tier um Envious Assassin enables full styles of gameplay on weapons that typically only have a certain amount in the mag. For example, fusion rifles with Reservoir Burst. Reservoir Burst would not be anywhere near as good of a perk if Envious Assassin did not exist in this game. So, Envious Assassin is pretty solid. I'm going to put it at rank 4 out of our wonderful 165 perks in this wonderful game. And we're going to move on to Explosive Head. Um, Explosive Head, I think it's fairly straightforward. I think everyone kind of understands how the head and payload perks work. Uh, it's a 15% flat damage increase. Uh, that being said, Explosive Head kind of works like Time Payload, there's a bit of a detonation delay, but it does have a nice blast radius actually. I was kind of surprised when I first tried using this perk a long time ago. It does actually have a decent blast radius that's I think is bigger than Explosive and, and Time Payload, so I think that's kind of worth mentioning. And it's one of the better damage perks that you can typically get on a bow. So Explosive Head, I'm going to go ahead and rank that in the B tier for being kind of an essential perk. And um, I think I've ranked it 32nd which places it below Chain Reaction. Yeah, below Chain Reaction. And we're going to move on to Explosive Light. Damn, there's a lot of perks with Explosive in their name. Uh, explosive Light uh, is a very, very overrated in my opinion. Explosive Light is not best in slot on any weapon anymore. Uh, if you want to do GMs, I would say Bipod is better and more ammo efficient, right? Explosive Light used to be very good in GMs, but I would say Bipod is a better option at this point. Um, number two, on Heavy GLs, the only thing Explosive Light is good for is one mag DPS. That is it. That is it. One mag DPS. And Cascade Point is arguably better for that as well. So Explosive Light is really, really limited. Uh, number one, by the orb counter, right? You can only get seven Explosive Light shots on uh, GLs, and Rockets are completely on bait and switch favor right now. So Explosive Light is not great in that regard. Uh, that being said, it's not bad. It's definitely an alternative type of perk, but I wouldn't say it's the best at anything. So right now, Explosive Light, I'm going to go ahead and rank it in the B tier. It's all the way at the bottom of B tier at rank 41. And we're going to leave it there and move on. Okay, next up we have Explosive Payload. Uh, explosive Payload is basically the same thing as Explosive Head. Um, the only thing that I'll point out about Explosive Payload is that it does help hand cannons with like overload hand cannon, I guess. Uh, you know, it decreases the stun time by allowing you to two tap instead of three tap. I've said this before in videos. Um, and that's, I guess, a little bit more useful than like Explosive Head because Explosive Head is by default a one shot stun and overload bow. Um, but that being said, you know, it's a payload perk. Uh, you know, in year two, year three of Destiny or whatever, like this perk would have been S tier. These days, it's been overshadowed by a great amount. So, and primary gameplay has also kind of been tuned down a lot uh, as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the B tier and we're going to rank it, I believe, rank 30, which places it right below Chain Reaction. Okay, next up we have Eye of the Storm. Eye of the Storm is obviously a PvP perk. It increases your handling, your accuracy cone, etc., etc. as your health goes down. Um, that being said, handling is in fact a PvE perk. Now, of course, you don't want a PvE perk that, you know, is reliant on you having low health, right? That's not great, but uh, it's not horrible, right? It's not uh, the worst thing in the world. We're not going to put it at the bottom of it here, but we're going to rank it 154th, and that's going to place it above Barrel Constrictor, but below DSR. Okay, next up, we have Feeding Frenzy. Feeding Frenzy is the definition of a perk that does not scale into endgame. Feeding Frenzy requires you to get two or more kills to have a significant reload buff, and if you are requiring two kills in endgame content, and you are only giving a mediocre reload buff, there's something going wrong. So Feeding Frenzy, we're going to rank it in the D tier. I mean, there's a billion and one better reload perks than Feeding Frenzy that don't even require you to get kills, like Threat Detector, for example, or Frenzy. So Feeding Frenzy, we're going to rank it D tier. It's ranked 94th, and uh, that places it right over here, right below On Guard. Okay, next up, we have Field Prep. So 
Field prep is one of the better endgame perks when it comes to being a consistency perk. I know a lot of people understand the idea of consistency being the optimal choice in endgame content. You want perks that don't require kills, and field prep is one of those, you know, catch-all perks. It, it does it has three very good effects, right? Number one, you have 50 reload while you're crouching and a 0.8x reload duration scaler, which is very high. That's enough to max the reload on almost any endgame weapon, right? Number one. Number two. You also get a ready stow animation scaler, which is very, very rare for a weapon perk to have. Most weapon perks just boost handling, and once you hit 100 handling, that's a cap. Field prep, ready stow duration, technically infinite, right? Technically infinite or a much lower floor. So that's also helpful. And number three, you also get sort of like one and a half reserves off of using field prep, which is also an excellent effect to have for just a perk that already increases your reload, right? So field prep is excellent. It's basically passive. You kind of have to remember to crouch, which isn't the end of the world. And a lot of people are used to using this thing because of like field prep clown hard head and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put field prep in the A tier. Very, very solid. Allows you to run triple resistant GMs while also effectively running a reserve mod. So I'm going to go ahead and rank it 13th. And that is going to place it below bipod, but above ALH. And we're going to move to Firefly. Firefly, I underrated this initially, although uh, Wabi changed my mind on the, on the matter. Firefly is kind of like Frenzy in that it works like a damage perk, but it also works like a reload perk. Um, obviously, the most important perk in PvE, generally speaking, is reload, and the only perk, the only stat, sorry, that this perk affects is, in fact, reload. So, um, Firefly, you know, 50 reload for 6 seconds after you get a single precision kill and a solar explosion, kind of like chain reaction, you know, incandescent type beat. Pretty good, right? We're going to put this thing at rank 24. And that is going to place it below controlled burst and above chain reaction right there boom perfect next up we have firing line now firing line is pretty overrated by a lot of people the only kind of saving grace of firing line that is remaining in my opinion is on dps snipers uh on linears it's been outclassed on pretty much yeah i mean that's the only other precision weapon that's really relevant and even on snipers there are some of them that have stuff like bait and switch so firing line is on its way out the door um you know, it require it's not even good for solo content either. You can't even make that argument. Um, so you know, firing line, it, it's it's kind of like explosive light. You know, it, it had its time to shine, right? Firing line, explosive light era of destiny, but um, it's not that great anymore. You know, triple tab firing reads was definitely had its moment, but uh, it's uh, you know, definitely not best in slot for really anything besides DPS snipers these days, and specifically energy DPS snipers because they don't have a better option. So I'm gonna go ahead and rank firing line as 34th, and that is going to place it, I believe. Uh, above explosive light but below explosive head in between the two explosives okay next up we have firmly planted uh firmly planted is kind of like field prep requires you to be crouched but this is definitely a pvp perk because it only boosts handling and everything else is all pvp related right you got stability accuracy cone recoil like that's all pretty much pvp related so we're gonna rank this thing in the f tier right in the f tier for sure uh, I just built firmly wrong in my spreadsheet. There we go. And um, we're going to rank it 146, which I believe places it below DSR, but above Eye of the Storm, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, above Eye of the Storm. Okay, next up we have Flash Counter. Flash Counter, uh, I know some people like sticking by this perk. I personally think this is extremely overrated. First of all, 20%, not full debuff, right? Now, you can make the argument this is one of the only legend, I think the only legendary option that provides the option to debuff enemies, but it's only for four seconds and you have to block with a sword. And you could be using something like Relentless, which increases ammo efficiency. Um, you know, there, there's there's a lot of things that you'd rather have in this column. Uh, Flash Counter is pretty, you know, pretty overrated. Um, I think by the people that enjoy it, I would say. Because uh, there's some of you in my comment section. I know you're out there. You, you've told me. But um, Flash Counter, I'm going to go ahead and rank it in the D tier. It's ranked 90th, and that's going to place it right above Assassin's Blade next to its niche friend of sword perks. Okay, next up, we have Focused Fury. Now, Focused Fury, I have an up and down relationship with this perk, right? Initially, I thought it was pretty bad. And then I had a phase where I thought it was, okay, you know, it's pretty good, right? You know, you can stow after you dump half your mag. And then, uh, you know, it, it lasts for a really long time. It's like 11 seconds. That's a long time, right? That's a long time for a DPS perk to last. And you can pull it out and it'll still be active and it's very easy to refresh. That being said, it still requires you to dump half a mag with no damage perk. And Wabi pointed out to me recently that it takes a very, very long time for Focus Fury to even match parity with something like Frenzy. And Frenzy doesn't require you to like hit precision shots for half your mag. It's just always active. You can miss however much you want. So I think Focus Fury, I've uh, overrated it a bit, but I think it's not horrible. It's not, hor it's not horrible by any stretch. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put Focus Fury at the very top of C tier. It is a tier breaker, the tier maker. 
Uh, and we're going to put at the top of C tier, rank 41. Okay, next up, we have fourth times the charm. Four times a charm, I think a lot of people understand generally that this perk is very good, but I, I kind of want to kind of describe the math to you guys, okay? If you are using a four times a charm weapon perfectly, like you are rain of firing between each reload and um, you're keeping within that two second window between each hit, right? It doubles the amount of total damage that a weapon does, okay? It doubles it, okay? There is nothing, there is no damage perk in the game that doubles the amount of total damage that a weapon does. So you can simp for bait and switch, for surrounded, as much as you want. Four times a charm doubles the amount of damage that a weapon can do, okay? So that is that is huge, right? That is absolutely massive. Um, and I'm going to place it in the S tier, right? I'm going to place it in the S tier. It's going to be at the bottom of S tier rank 9. Um, and it is a bit situational because precision weapons aren't super relevant for DPS these days. But, um, you know, four times a charm, just wanted you guys to know. It is, it doubles the amount of damage that you do. That, that is a very, you know, it's, it's obviously, you know, half the reason why uh, people like Retrofit Escapade so much, right? So, um, yeah, and obviously it extends your, your mag DPS as well because, you know, it refunds directly to your mag. So, pretty helpful. Okay, my voice is going out. Jesus. Okay. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> Next up, we have Fragile Focus. Fragile Focus is another basically PvP restricted perk. Uh, it's focused on giving you range. However, right, unlike a lot of the PvP perks that are focused on, hey, you're low health, I'm going to give you a, 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 you know, a boost. This is, hey, you're high health, I'm going to give you a boost. Now, granted, it does give you range, which is like range is one of the least important stats in, PV in PvE, um, but it is passive. It's basically passive. It's active all the time. And you can make an argument that range might be useful on some like, you know, primaries or something like that. But still, it is a PvP perk through and through. We're going to place it at 148, which is going to place it, I believe, below Dynamic Sway Reduction and below Firmly Planted right there. Yeah, perfect. Okay, moving on, we have Frenzy. Frenzy. Okay, I think you guys know where this one's going to go, right? Frenzy, even after it's nerfed from 20%, remains as one of the best pve perks in endgame pve history in destiny 2 okay this thing gives you 15 percent damage basically for free right a lot of people are like oh explosive payload is so good it gives you it gives you like 15 percent for free frenzy does that but then it also gives you a hundred handling and a hundred reload speed okay think about that a hundred handling and a hundred reload speed for getting no kills no kills you don't even have to do damage. You can just receive damage, okay? If you are an end game player and you are playing with your brain on, there is brain activity in, in your cranium, okay? You are going to be taking or receiving damage around every five seconds or less, okay? Frenzy is insane. It can make horrible weapons feel like great weapons and it maxes your reload and it gives you a damage buff, a respectable damage buff too, right? So Frenzy, no choice. This thing is probably the best primary perk to touch this game ever. We're going to put it in the S tier right below bait and switch where it belongs at rank number three okay moving on we have full auto trigger system now full auto trigger system you might be wondering does this perk have any merit is this perk any good at all now that we have a full auto firing option in our menu well you can see over here in our lovely compendium it says 10 percent faster fire rate of sh on shotguns now there is probably a universe out there where shotgun swapping with full auto is slightly helpful because there is nothing in this game that increases fire rate on shotguns perk wise besides assault mag so i could see it maybe seeing some use right if you had a high handling shotgun and you were using it for swapping but that is such a tiny 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 part of the the massive destiny universe that it has to go at the bottom of e tier okay i don't have a choice it has to go at the bottom of e tier we're gonna place it above dual loader because you know dual loader really really sucks um but full auto trigger system yeah it's pretty bad we're gonna move on to full court Okay, full court, another perk that's, you know, kind of had a fall from grace. People are like, oh my god, you know, my uh, interference six with, you know, clown full court is going to be so good when GLs get their buff and then crickets, you know, no one no one used the gun. Full court is, um, it's like explosive light in that it has a suboptimal damage perk, except for it doesn't have the blast radius benefit, and it also is way more annoying to use. It's way more annoying to use, right? The, the number of bosses that you can use full court to its full effect on in this game is like sanctified that's it that's it like sanctified that, that's literally it right and on sanctified there are wonder there's this wonderful perk on an adaptive heavy gl called bait and switch on cataphract gl3 that is 10 percent more damage and doesn't require you to be three kilometers from your target so full court i'm gonna go ahead and rank it where it belongs in the c tier we're gonna rank it 67th for being an alternative perk and uh, i'm gonna place it right over here okay Next up, we have Genesis. 
Now, uh, Genesis is also pretty overrated. Um, the only thing that I think Genesis is good for is being on an anti-barrier primary that's paired with adaptive munitions. So Genesis, um, if you stun an anti-barrier primary, if you stun a, you know, a, a barrier champion with an anti-barrier primary, it's a free reload. It's a free reload. So it basically acts like auto-loading, but without a cooldown. The only cooldown is how often you stun a barrier champion. So Genesis plus adaptive munitions, I think is a match made in heaven. Now that being said, some people are like, hey, what if I have an energy sniper or an energy fusion rifle or something with, with Genesis and I pop an elemental shield and I get one ammo back? That is such a niche use case. Uh, in these days, if you're playing optimally in like a GM or you're breaking an elemental shield, number one, one special ammo every time an elemental shield appears is like, that's pitiful, right? That's pitiful. And number two, you're not going to be like, you're switching to a sniper just to break a shield. Like most people, they just shoot the rocket at the shield and it, it goes kaboom no matter what element it is, right? Especially with match game being gone. So Genesis, I would say it's only real use in endgame content is on anti-barrier primaries with um adaptive munitions that being said some people out there you know they use it for garden speed running it is true you can use it on forbearance you can use it on explosive personality but i would say that is a extremely extremely tiny niche that is one raid you were doing one raid one speed run and it's like one encounter where that's relevant okay so i like genesis okay i was a genesis forbearance enjoyer i have three forbearances one of them has a genesis on it okay i don't hate it but i'm not gonna pretend that garden of salvation speed running should lift it a tier okay we're gonna put it in the d tier near the bottom near the very bottom right over here it's going to be ranked 106. okay next up we have golden tricorn i think golden tricorn is another underrated perk kind of like cascade point golden tricorn let me remind you of something okay some of you might be wondering what is adrenaline junkie doing down here okay why is it worse than cold steel why is it worse than full court well these perks they are rated in a vacuum when it comes to what weapons they come on but they're not rated on a vacuum compared to the other perks that exist in the sandbox right because obviously uh, you know, if you just rank a perk on its own merits and you ignore the entire rest of the sandbox, all the perks would be, would be you know, just S tier if they were beneficial at all, right? Now, the reason why Adrenaline Junkie is in the C tier is because Golden Tricorn exists, okay? Golden Tricorn is Adrenaline Junkie on crack, okay? Adrenaline Junkie is like, eh, you know, you know, 25, 35, whatever. It, it's like a middling damage perk. Golden Tricorn, Giga Chat, 50% damage perk. This is the highest percentage mainstream damage perk in the game, okay? 50%, and not only that, it's not for the pitiful five seconds, not for the pitiful five seconds that Adrenaline Junkie has. It does 10 full seconds, 10 full seconds, 10 full seconds, and it's refreshable on every grenade kill, okay? If we ever get a machine gun with Demo and Golden Tricorn, all of you sorry Demo ad Junkie lovers are gonna be crying. You're gonna be crying, okay? Demo Tricorn is gonna be absolutely insane. Tricorn is even usable for damage with how long its perk is, right? With 10 seconds is ridiculous, okay? And with how ability spammy our sandbox is right now, stuff like sun bracers, stuff like throwing hammers, right? Any refreshable ability that you can use every 10 seconds, right? We're, we're talking about demo and adjunky. Demo and adjunky, those are perks that, you know, it requires you every five seconds, right? Golden Tricorn is 10. It has twice the forgiveness and it has almost twice the damage perk, right? Golden Tricorn is ridiculous underrated. That's all I'm going to say. I've been yapping about it for like two minutes straight. I'm going to put Golden Tricorn where it belongs. And that's going to be at the top of B tier. At the top of B tier. We're going we're to place it at the top, at the top of B tier. Um, and I believe it's placed... Uh, where is it? Yeah, right underneath Controlled Burst. Yeah, rank 23rd. Sorry, I, I yapped a little too much for there. But, you know, you guys have to understand You guys have to understand my love for, for Golden Tricorn. Okay? Uh, next up, we have Grave Robber. Uh, Grave Robber is basically used on like one weapon type, and that is shotguns, right? There's not really any other weapons that Grave Robber is really, really good on. Um, that being said, it is very good on shotguns, right? It's one of the best shotgun perks with one-two punch. Uh, maybe the best shotgun perk on one-two punch. It makes or breaks the shotgun. You never have to reload that thing. Really, really great. Um, that being said, I really hope they roll Grave Robber into Pugilist. That would be really, really nice. Uh, Demo got the same treatment, and Bungie's design philosophy is that, hey, you know, grenades are a lot, you know harder to spam than melees but you know that was a long time ago bungie grenades are very easy to spam these days so i would like to see grave robber rolled into pugilist um but you know not my highest priority or anything like that um grave robber is still very good on its own even without any like melee regen benefits or anything like that uh, i'm gonna go ahead and put grave robber in the c tier and um we're gonna rank it 57th which i believe places it uh above ensemble yes above ensemble but below destabilizing right over here yeah okay Next up, we have Gutshot Straight. Now, Gutshot Straight, um, the first time I heard about this perk being used on anything or desired on anything was the Guardian Game Scout Rifle, the Terexipos, that one. 
um, with like explosive paler or something for like some some quirky damage distribution or something. Um, this thing it it rewards you for aiming poorly, which is like okay. Um, I, I guess I mean I, I guess it's kind of like head seeker, but like I guess a little bit better. It probably has a better net net, net positive effect. Uh, that being said, I'm not sure why you would ever want this thing. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, put gutshot straight in the E tier. In the E tier, okay. I don't think uh, there's any reason to to want a perk that increases body shot damage. Um, so yeah, we're gonna put it in the E tier. I believe that gets placed above uh, Duelist Trance and yeah, but below Eddie Current. Yeah, and it's ranked 123rd. Okay, next up we have Harmony. Uh, Harmony is okay, right? Um, it only requires that you get a kill with another weapon, right? So it works well with uh, perks like Discord, for example, which also require kills from other weapons or like Envious Assassin, for example. However, it's only a 20% buff, okay? 20% is not very high. If you're going to require that I switch weapons and I get kills with another weapon, there's this funny other perk in the game that is called Bait and Switch, which does 15% more damage for a longer duration, and it's just a better perk in general, right? It doesn't even require kills, it just requires hits, right? So Harmony, you know, it, it's kind of a struggle. I mean, it does give you a little bit of handling, which is nice. But, um, you know, there are other perks that give you almost 20% or 20% damage for much less effort. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put in Harmony where it belongs. I think most people view Harmony as a PvP perk anyways, but I think it, it doesn't deserve to be an F tier. So Harmony is going to be a D tier perk, and we're going to place it right underneath Cluster Bomb, if I can find Cluster Bomb, and it's going to be ranked 79th. Okay, next up we have Hatchling. Uh, Hatchling is the Threadling perk. You know, you kill something, makes a little Threadling underneath it. Um, for certain special weapons that can't crit, you need to get multiple kills, which kind of sucks. And a single Threadling, I mean, even with Swarmers on and your Threadling applying Unravel, not very good. Yeah, not very good. The Hatchling is probably the weakest of the elemental, you know, 3.0 perks, I guess, you know, compared to stuff like Incandescent or Destabilizing Rounds or Headstone, you know, Hatchling is definitely, uh, you know, <laughs> the loser child of the bunch. So we're going to go ahead and rank it in 98th. And I believe I've placed that, uh, where is that? I believe that it's above counterattack. Yeah, above counterattack, but below feeding frenzy. Okay, next up we have Headseeker. Uh, Headseeker is pretty, you know, it's it's kind of whatever. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a PvP perk, but it does have a net positive effect on PvE. Like it's not bad, right? Like some of the perks actively do nothing or are bad. I would say in some instances, it's a net positive, right? So I'm going to put a head seeker, you know, it's it's not horrible, right? Uh, we're going to go ahead and put it in the middle-ish of the F tier at rank 150, which is going to place it underneath Fragile Focus, but above uh, Eye of the Storm. Okay, next up we have Headstone. Um, Headstone, unfortunately, you know, if we are ranking things within the sandbox, Headstone does suffer from being, you know, for, he was he was forced to play Stasis type uh, type of deal. Um, if Stasis was a lot better and Shatter Damage did a lot more, and uh, a Stasis Crystal exploding was more useful on more subclasses, like something like Incandescent or Destabilizing, you could argue, or even even Volt Shot, you can argue is good no matter what subclass you're on. Headstone is like, you know, you'd rather use a bunch of other perks than a Headstone, even if you're not if you're, if you're not playing Stasis, right? So Headstone, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it at rank 60, um, which is going to place it, uh, I believe, where is it? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to start zooming out here, guys. Uh, we're, we're losing sight of the entire tier list. I'm having to scroll up and down. Uh, Headstone is in the C tier, and we're going to place it above Ensemble, I believe. Where's Ensemble? Yeah, we're going to place it above Ensemble, but below Grave Robber. Okay, next up we have Heal Clip. Okay, Heal Clip is... Um, the only thing good about heal clip, okay, 1x cure, x1 cure is like very, very little health. Very, very little health, right? Requires you to get a kill and then reload. Manually reload too, which is annoying, right? And uh, on top of this, uh, 1x cure is nothing in endgame content. That is nothing. It's like, a, it's like a hair of health, right? The only thing good about this is that it procs benevolence. However, there are much, much, much easier ways to proc benevolence. On Titan, you can throw a ha throwing hammer near your allies. On Hunter, you can throw a throwing knife near your allies, or radiant dodge on them, or healing grenade them. On Warlock, you can have people do this thing called walking inside of your rift. So, I would say that's not a very, you know, important benefit of heal clip. Um, but I will note that as, a, as something that is, I guess, something to note, right? Um, we're going to go ahead and put this at the top of E tier, ranked 108. It is going to be the tier boundary for the D and E tier. Okay, next up we have Heating Up. Heating Up is obviously very much a PvP perk. I don't think anyone is going to disagree with that. Uh, heating Up is, you know, I think good on like fusions. Uh, you know, it increases stability, you know, helps with your cone size. That being said, none of these things are useful in PvE. So I'm going to go ahead and put Heating Up 
Uh, where did I put Heating Up? Heating Up is ranked 153rd, which is right above Eye of the Storm, I believe. Yes, right above Eye of the Storm. Okay, next up we have High Ground. Uh, high Ground, I actually thought that this perk scaled more based on how high you were above a target, and I thought that would have been cooler, because Full Core is kind of like that, right? It scales based on how far you are from a target. That being said, uh, Bungie just made it so that, you know, as long as you're above a target, you're just above it, period. Um, you do 20% more damage. Now, if High Ground scaled and did more than 20%, I would be probably more interested in this, and I think a lot of solo players would be more interested in this. However, um, there are perks that cost nothing, and also do 20% or more damage and don't require you to, to be above an enemy and you can't even abuse heat rises to like make sure that you have a 20% perk because you have to be grounded right so not a very good perk um very very situational and even in those situations there's just perks that are more universal and do the same thing so high ground we're gonna rank it 116th in the e tier and i'm gonna place it right above blunt execution rounds okay next up we have high impact reserves uh, high impact reserves uh i think this is hugely overrated i think the only weapon that high impact reserves has ever been possibly useful on is a rewind rounds praetis revenge now that being said supremacy exists so why would you use rewind rounds you know praetis revenge high impact reserves only kicks in underneath 50 percent and even on that average you're basically boosting your total damage i think across your whole mag by like 12 13 14 15 percent it is not much right you're much better off using something like frenzy which will boost your damage across the entirety of your mag and um yeah that's all i really have to say about this i mean it's high impact reserves very very mediocre um definitely more of a pvp perk i think for most people and um even in pve it's like you know pretty pretty bad so rank 77 is going to be given to high impact reserves that's going to place it right above cluster bomb and we're going to move on to hip fire grip now, Hipfire Grip is obviously very much a PV, um, PvP perk, so it's going to be ranked in the F tier. That being said, um, you know, I, I can maybe see some weapons benefiting from Hipfire Grip in, in PvE. Uh, I'm not saying you should ever use, just to be clear, I'm not saying you should ever use Hipfire Grip in PvE, but compared to some of these other PvP perks that are, you know, all about boosting range and stuff, I think it's a little bit better, right? You know, hip firing weapon, you know, maybe, you know, a little bit better. So I'm going to rank it 140th, and we're going to place that right underneath backup plan and move on to Immovable Object. Uh, immovable object is a glaive perk. I think it's the first glaive perk actually on this entire list, which is wonderful. Um, immovable object. Um, I got some flack for saying this is a good perk because someone was like, uh, why do you have to be standing still with your glaive? You're going to die if you stand still with the glaive. First of all, no, you're not. And second, um, this thing is good because as long as you play with it in mind, like you stop moving while you're shooting, um, you actually double, you, you basically double uh, the amount of weapon energy that you get off your glaive which if you're comparing this to something like replenishing aegis is much more ammo efficient and just allows you to sit there blocking for a longer period of time so i think it's a good glaive perk you do have to kind of play with some intention and kind of sit there and not move while you're shooting um but it's not the worst thing in the world and um you know i, I think it's not that horrible it's not that horrible so i'm gonna put it in the d tier i don't think it deserves to be in the e tier uh, we're going to rank it 81st, which I believe is going to place it right underneath Harmony and Collective Action, right over there. Okay, next up we have Impulse Amplifier. Impulse Amplifier, I did underrate a little bit. Um, this is basically restricted to just projectile weapons, so glaives, rockets, GLs. That being said, it is very, very good on those weapons, right? Um, you have to understand, this thing gives you 20, well 25 if enhanced, 25 reload speed, which is already a decent bump. And then it gives you a reload duration multiplier, which is 0.8 to 0.85, which is really, really good really really good right that's like if i'm not mistaken like like field prep levels right so or no i think that's the ads duration and that's i think that's already so duration yeah forget what i said about field prep but regardless that's a very very good reload scaler for doing nothing you do nothing you're doing nothing right so rockets obviously you know reconstruction auto loading stuff like that is more preferred but on something like a special gl or on a glaive especially on a glaive this is an awesome perk this is an awesome perk and if we're going to be honest with ourselves and review perks just on their own merits right and not really think about what weapons they they go on impulse amplifier for being passive gives you really like a lot of reload so i'm going to go ahead and put in the c tier it's a very very good perk i would say it's as essential to glaives as archer's tempo is to bows so i think it's only fair that it goes right underneath archer's tempo at rank 44. okay next up we have incandescent Incandescent, I think, is a little bit overrated. Um, the Scorch tick damage is relatively minimal, and even proccing something like Singeing, you know, Singeing is not that important, and on a lot of Solar subclasses, you are proccing Scorching a lot of the time anyway. So I think Incandescent is a little bit overrated. The Scorch damage, is, it scales very poorly into endgame PvE and high-level content. And, of course, on the weapons that Incandescent rolls on, unless you're talking about something like a machine gun, it takes a while to kill targets with something like a primary or even like a trace rifle. So Incandescent 
I'm not a huge fan of this thing, but I can't deny it from being at least in the C tier. We're going to go ahead and rank it 50th, which is going to place it right underneath CTM. Okay, next up we have Invisible Hand. Invisible Hand is like... What were you thinking, Mudgy? What, what is this perk? <laughs> what is this perk? This perk, we got a little too silly. Okay, we, we did a little too much trolling. Okay, this is an F tier perk. It's definitely designed for PvP. But this perk is like... It, it, after you miss multiple times, it gives you stability. Which is like... I, I don't know, like, I guess if you had an armor piercing auto rifle or something, it might be a little bit helpful. I don't know. I, I don't know who this perk is for. Uh, it's certainly not for me because I don't use armor piercing auto rifles in PvP. But that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and put it straight to the bottom of F tier. It's not the very worst perk, but it's certainly close to it. We're going to rank it 163rd. There's only two perks underneath this one. And we're going to move on to Iron Gaze. Speaking of very bad perks that are at the very bottom of this tier list, uh, we're going to talk about Iron Gaze. Iron Gaze is 20 aim assist and minus 30 range. Aim assist is basically useless in PvE, and minus 30 range, that's enough to be noticeable on certain weapons, and that's going to actually significantly draw back your falloff range, um, or your, your, yeah, your minimum falloff range on certain like primaries and stuff. So like, Iron Gaze is kind of shooting yourself in the foot, right? Not a lot of perks in Destiny are actively bad in like in endgame PvE, right? They're, and not a lot of them are like literally bad. But I would say Iron Gaze cuts cuts it close, right? I would say Iron Gaze goes in the F tier. It is ranked 164th. And we're going to move on to the worst perk on this list. And that is Iron Grip, okay? Iron Grip, 20 stability, minus 30 reload. Minus 30 reload, okay? I don't know who is using this, right? Maybe on like a fusion rifle, it's good because you don't reload fusion rifles really in PvE that much and 20 stability is good. But if we're talking PvE, minus 30 reload is bad, okay? It is really bad. And 20 stability is not a worthy trade-off at all. This is easily the worst perk in the game for PvE. We're gonna leave it at that, call it at that. It is actively throwing, okay? Next up, we have Iron Reach. So another Iron Banner perk. This one decreases stability, which is not the end of the world. Stability is not that important in PvE, but it also passively gives you 20 range, which is kind of like, uh, you know, Fragile Focus, right? Kind of similar. So I'm going to place it right underneath Fragile Focus, um, mostly because, you know, the stability can hurt a little bit when it comes to, like, machine guns, autos, and stuff like that. And um, Fragile Focus, you know, it doesn't have that same, um, that same downside. Okay, next up, we have Keep Away. Um, Keep Away, I think a lot of people see this as a PvP perk. Um... I'm going to actually go ahead and place it in the E tier, mostly because it boosts reload by an actual fair amount, right? 30 reload is no joke, right? That's actually a fair bump. That's definitely very noticeable. And uh, it has basically a passive requirement as long as you're not near any enemies. So if you're using something like a scout rifle and you're like sniping enemies, I guess this might be useful, but it's certainly not going to go anywhere above the E tier, just to be clear. I think is this is a little bit above um, some of the F tier uh, PvP perks though, because it is like a 30 reload bump and the requirement is not that hard to me. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put Keep Away in the E tier. We're going to rank it 115th, which is going to place it right above High Crown and underneath Box Breathing. Okay, next up we have Kickstart. Uh, Kickstart is pretty much a PvP perk, right? Pretty much a PvP perk. Um, I'm going to place it right at the top of the F tier, right at the top of the F tier, mostly because I think Keep Away is pretty easy to proc, whereas Kickstart, you have to be sprinting for a while and then slide into a fusion shot, which is like... I don't know why you'd be doing that in PvE, so I think that's pretty. That's a pretty hard sell for me, at least. Um, that being said, it is definitely the best PvP perk in PvE because it does just increase damage for you know no no downside. It's just 15% flat damage, and it also decreases your charge time as well. So just for a short period of time, just for sprinting and sliding, you get like I don't know, like a 25% maybe um, DPS increase. So you know you know why not? Not not horrible, but uh, certainly not something I'd put above the PvP tier. Okay, next up we have Kill Clip. Uh, Kill Clip, uh, I mean, this is mostly used in PvP these days, but Kill Clip is not horrible on primaries. Uh, for a manual kill reload, uh, you get a 25% damage buff for 5 seconds. Um, so it's basically like, you know, Rampage or AJ, except requires less stacks, but requires you to manually reload. Now, of course, you guys know, I'm not a big fan of manually reloading, and there are much better endgame perks that are more consistent, like Frenzy, or do splash damage like Firefly, or, you know, interact with their subclass. So Kill Clip, I'm not going to give it a lot of points. We're going to put it in the D tier. I'm going to rank it a hundred and second, and that's going to place it above counterattack, but below hatchling. Okay, next up we have killing tally. Killing tally is um, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, I think it's a little bit overrated because it maxes out at only 30%, right? It doesn't go to 50 like Tricorn, um, and it does require you to stack kills, right? It, it does require you to stack one, two, three kills and then commit to that weapon, right? Whereas something like, you know, Adrenaline Junkie or Tricorn, you can, you can get it off of like one kill. 
right? One kill or two kills and you're like at the max stack level, right? So killing tally is a little bit, you know, it does require you to commit a lot to your gameplay. That being said, you know, the weapons that it does roll on, you can kind of fire indefinitely with them, like sub tally, you know, commemoration. And uh, it is very, very universally applicable. So I will give it that. We're going to put in the A tier. I'm going to rank it 17th. And that is going to place it underneath chill clip, uh, but above a couple other options in the A tier. Okay, next up we have kinetic, or sorry, not kinetic, sorry, killing wind, killing wind. Uh, Killing Wind is definitely a PvP perk, but I do like it a lot. It gives you 50 hand, um, it gives, sorry, not 50 handling. It gives you 50 mobility. It gives you 40 handling uh, on just a weapon kill, right? So it makes your gun feel pretty good uh, as soon as you get a weapon kill. That being said, no reload, no damage, um, nothing, you know, super special, but it's not horrible, right? It's not horrible. Uh, it's definitely one of the better um, PvP perks. I'm going to rank it uh, second, second in the PvP perk, PvP perk tier. I can't speak English. Uh, and that's going to be ranked 136 and we're going to move on. Next up, we have Kinetic Tremors. Uh, Kinetic Tremors is a kind of a favorite of mine, uh, especially on the Supremacy. You can basically tag an enemy twice with Supremacy and if, essentially have a 66% damage perk uh, on those two shots, right? For, for doing nothing, for just tagging enemy twice. Uh, you can tag multiple enemies. The only cooldown is on a single enemy, right? So I personally can't speak to the effectiveness of Kinetic Tremors on primaries. I don't think they're very good on primaries, to be honest. Um, they're certainly better than, you know, like your average damage perk on primaries, but on supremacy and specifics. And if we're going to talk about other, um, you know, special weapons that might get kinetic trevors in the future, uh, it's a very, very good perk, very, very underrated, and it does do a fair amount of splash damage as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put kinetic tremors right at the top of B tier. I think it's the tier breaker, the tier boundary for A and B tier, and uh, we're going to rank it 20th out of 165. Okay, next up we have lasting impression. Uh, lasting impression, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down right over here. Lasting Impression is uh, pretty bad, pretty bad, right? Obviously, you have that delayed detonation that a lot of people don't like. Now, personally, I think Lasting Impression is fairly easy to play around. I think a lot of people complain about it a lot, but I think it's fairly easy to play around. You just stick a boss early when you know it's about to be damageable. That being said, it does not interact with Wolfpack rounds. It is horrible in GMs, right? Obviously, you want to detonate instantly on like a champ that's stunned or something like that. Uh, I know some people like using it in Lost Sector, like sticking it on stop and then stunning it. I think that's a little bit silly. Um, lasting Impression, it's very much so an alternative perk, much like Explosive Light, except Explosive Light is better. So I'm going to go ahead and rank it 61st. We're going to place it uh, underneath Headstone, right underneath Headstone and above Ensemble. And we're going to move on to Lead from Gold. Lead from Gold is very good. Very, very good perk. Very solid perk. Um, anytime you pick up heavy ammo, which can be made using Aeon, Cenotaph, or just natural heavy pickups, um, you get a quarter of your special ammo, right? Which is a lot, right? That's a fair amount. And um, the enhanced version um, does you know, it boosts this to 35%. It boosts to a third of your special ammo, which is a lot, right? If you're running double special, obviously it distributes that across your special weapons, but it's a very, very good, uh, very, very good perk. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the A tier right above field prep. Uh, very, very solid perk. Um, if you are not looking for a reload perk or you're just looking for a neutral gameplay perk, lead from gold, you can't really go wrong with it on a special weapon. Okay, next up we have loose change. Loose change, um, pretty rough, pretty buff, pretty rough, pretty rough. Uh, loose change is basically, if you apply an elemental debuff, you get 50 reload for 5 seconds uh, with if, if it's enhanced. Now, elemental debuffs are a little bit restricted. Uh, I believe scorch counts, jolt counts, suppress counts. So, you know, jolt and suppress, uh, you know, not as common. But on something like an incandescent weapon, not horrible. But would you rather use loose change or something like reconstruction on something like acacias, right? Or like demo, right? You're not going to pick loose change, right? You're not going to pick loose change. So loose change, I'm going to go ahead and put in the E tier. It's pretty situational. And even in those situations, those perk pairings where it might be good, you'd probably rather use another perk. So I'm going to put it in the E tier, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a fat reload buff, but it's super situational. So I'm going to put it in the E tier and that's going to place it below box breathing, I believe. Yeah, right over here, ranked 112. Next up, we have moving target. Uh, moving target is very much a PVP per, uh, PVP perk. I cannot speak English anymore, man. My, my brain is melting. Oh, I can't wait to see what I'm going to be like at the end of this two hours, maybe three hours. Uh, moving target is very much a PVP perk, um, but the one thing it does do in PVE, uh, I guess aim assist is, you know, it's whatever, but it does increase your strafe movement while you're ADSing. So I guess that could be kind of useful, I guess, if you're trying to like stun a champ while moving or something to dodge projectiles. But, you know, that that's super far-fetched. I'm just trying to come up with some, you know, imaginary scenarios to see where I would rank these if I was forced to use the perks in the F tier, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the in the F tier and we're going to place it underneath uh, Iron Reach and that is going to be ranked 151st. Okay, next up we have Mulligan, clearly another PvP perk. 
Um, this is basically reversal of fortune, but worse. I guess you could use this thing on like armor piercing weapons to get, you know, ammo refund on primaries, but uh, that's pretty niche. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and place that right above barrel constrictor, uh, which is right over here. And that's going to be ranked 156. Uh, next up, we have multi kill clip. Multi kill clip is like kill clip, but I think it's a bit worse. Uh, it starts out at a lower damage amount, and then it requires repeated kill reloads to stack up to tier two and tier three. Whereas kill clip, um, you could just keep kill reloading one enemy and keep it at that nice stable 25%. So multi kill clip, you know, I hate perks that require you to manual kill reload for the most part, especially perks like this that only last five seconds or five and a half seconds and require you to manually like constantly do it. So multi kill clip certainly not a perk that is worthy of end game content in my opinion. So we're gonna go ahead and place that in the at the bottom of D tier I believe right underneath kill clip, which is right over here, ranked 103rd. Okay, next up we have no distractions. Again, another PVP perk. I don't need to say much about this. This is just flinch resistance, which I guess can be kind of useful. So I'm gonna place it slightly above fragile focus, and uh, we're gonna leave it at rank 147. Okay, next up offhand strike. Oh my god, another PVP perk. Um. This is basically kind of like hipfire grip, except for you need to kill. So worse than hipfire grip. Uh, offhand strike, I'm just going to go ahead and put it 160th. That's going to place it uh, above air assault. And um, yeah, we're going to move on. Okay, one for all. One for all, another perk uh, that I think is pretty overrated. Okay, I personally don't like perks that require you to shoot three separate enemies, right? Like, I mean, you're, you're tapping three individual enemies to get this perk kicking. Um, killing tally, for example, um, it doesn't have a timer, right? It doesn't have a timer and, um, you can't refresh one for all. Killing tally does basically the same thing, right? You're not going to just tap one enemy, then two enemy, then three enemy. You're going to kill the first enemy then kill the second enemy, then kill the third enemy. And then killing tally is infinite duration, right? So that being said, one for all has a very long duration and synergizes with stats for all. But, uh, again, you know, even stats for all, it just boosts manual reload. I'd rather have something like reconstruction. One for all is, I don't know, it's a little gimmicky in my opinion. Um, you do have to like, you know, shoot three separate enemies and it's not refreshable. If it was refreshable, I think it'd be very good. Uh, but that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put one for all in the B tier. We're going to place it in the B tier. Uh, we're going to place it below Firefly, but above Chain Reaction. Okay, next up we have one two punch. Uh, one two punch, I'm sure you guys know, this is kind of a meta dependent perk, but right now the meta loves one two punch. It loves it on Arc Hunter. It loves it on uh, Arc Titan. It loves it on Strand Titan. It loves it on plenty of things. So one two punch, e even just on regular melees, right? On on subclasses that are not super strong melee wise, it's still pretty good, right? It still boosts your melee damage a fair amount. Um, it's still a good roaming perk to have um, compared to you know something like trench or surrounded. It's still pretty good, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the S tier. It is meta defining right now. In the future, if this perk tends you know takes a hit uh, from melee damage nerfs or something like that, we'll probably move it lower. But as for this season, as of right now, this thing is definitely S tier. We're gonna put it rank seven, right above demo. Okay, next up, we have Opening Shot. Opening Shot, another PvP perk. I don't think I need to say much about this. Not very useful. I'm going to place Opening Shot rank 152, and that's going to place it uh, right above Heating Up. Okay, next up, we have Osmosis. Okay, Osmosis, there was a time way back, way back yonder, okay, when Esoteric would use Osmosis to get three, you know, weapon elements on his loadouts so that he could break a GM with match game shields with three shields, okay? That time was like two years ago, okay? We are out of that era. The only thing you should ever be using Osmosis for is maybe on a succession with demo uh, for Verity's Brow, okay? Because succession is pretty good at one-shotting ads, right? And uh, if you're on something like Tractor or Galley, uh, it's probably easier to use than like a wave frame or a Trace Rifle for getting long range stack refreshes for Verity's Brow. That being said, most of you are not doing that. And I hope you're not doing that because that's very, very niche, very, very situational. I think you're not doing that. We're going to place this thing in the bottom of D tier. It is the tier contender, the tier break, very, very bottom of D tier, ranked 107. Okay, next up we have Outlaw. Outlaw is one of the oldest, oldest reload perks in the game, the classic Outlaw kill clip combo. That being said, it is one of the highest reload buffs in the game. 70 reload speed, 70, right? The only thing that's higher that I think that's mainstream is Frenzy, which is 100, right? So if you're just getting a precision kill, you get 70 reload speed, you get a 0.9x reload duration multiplier, and it's for a pretty long time as well, right? So Outlaw is pretty good, right? Not horrible. I would say it is probably better than something like Beating Frenzy. So I'm going to go ahead and rank it in the D tier, and we're going to rank it 73rd. It is a manual reload assist perk, which I don't like, but it is one of the better ones. So I'm going to place it somewhere near the top of D tier. I think it is right below Disruption Break at rank 73. Yes, that is correct. Okay, next up we have Overflow. I think Overflow is, I think Overflow is a bit uh, overrated, right? 
Um, it is pretty good if you have shoot to loot. That being said, uh, it does only proc when you pick up ammo. And ammo is, you know, compared to something like Reconstruction, which has a much higher uptime, the, you know, the, the rate at which you get ammo is a lot slower than the rate at which Reconstruction autoloads your rocket, right? So if you just want two in the mag, Reconstruction does it a lot better. That being said, Overflow is useful in some aspects, right? It can be used to essentially double your mag for free uh, in some instances on something like, you know, Cascade Point Shotgun or something like that. Um, but I would say for the most part, Overflow has been overshadowed by Envious Assassin and Reconstruction in all of its respective jobs. So I'm going to go ahead and put Overflow in the... in the B tier. In the B tier. We're going to place it near the bottom of B tier. And that's going to be right underneath... Sorry, am I tripping? I'm tripping. Where does it go? Right above Explosive Light. Sorry, right above Explosive Light. Ranked 39th. Okay, next up we have Paracausal Affinity. Paracausal Affinity, I think I slept on this perk initially when it came out. This perk is pretty good. It's basically like a 20% perk for just getting a kill, right? It's like Kill Clip, except you don't need to reload, which is kind of nice, right? And um, other things, uh, you know, re-trigger the perk that are match the, I guess, alignment. I think this is the only perk in the game that uses the term alignment, right? Light and dark. Um, but, you know, it's it's pretty easy, pretty free. Like if you're uh, using like a Paracausal Affinity um, Acacias, for example, you can get Sunbracer's kill and, you know, it'll reproc the perk. So it's not bad. That being said, um, I think there are other perks that I'd rather use on Paracausal on that specific gun as well. Um, and, you know, it's 20% flat damage. I'd probably, you know, take the 5% L on damage and boost my reload and handling by 100 instead and take Frenzy. Uh, but that being said, it's not horrible. It's not horrible. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the C tier. It's a decent alternative to other better damage perks. And I'm going to go ahead and place it right underneath the stabilizing rounds at rank 56. Okay. Next up, we have Perfect Float. This is another PvP perk. Um, the only difference is Perfect Float is very, it's completely passively activated, right? Doesn't require kills. Perfect Float basically is like Frenzy. It's like Frenzy, but less strict requirements. And um, it just boosts your air, it boosts your AE and gives you flinch resistance. So it gives you like no distraction effect without ADS. It's basically passive. So for that reason, I'm going to place it a little bit above no distractions. For that reason, yeah, we're going to place it uh, underneath DSR, but above firmly planted at rank 144. Okay, next up we have Perpetual Motion. Uh, Perpetual Motion, I think, is a little bit overrated for PvP. Perpetual Motion only boosts your stats by 20, okay? And that's if you have X2, and you have to be moving all the time for this thing to work, right? And of course, I, you know, of course, endgame players are moving, strafing, doing that sort of stuff all the time. But it is kind of annoying anytime you interrupt your movement, you have to build up those stacks again, right? And think about it like this. Perpetual Motion gives you 20 handling and 20 reload for being in constant activity. There's another perk out there that boosts your weapon by 15% damage, 100 reload, and 100 handling for being in constant activity, and that's Frenzy, right? So Perpetual Motion, you know, it pales in comparison to something like Frenzy for being a constant uptime type of perk, for being a constant activity perk. So I'm going to go ahead and place it in the D tier. Uh, I think there's plenty of reload handling perks that are much better, better uptime, less annoying. Rank 85, we're going to place it underneath Energy Transfer, wherever that is, and uh, call it at that. We're going to call it at that and move on. Okay, next up we have uh, Precision Instrument. Precision Instrument, okay. This is one of the new perks that came out, I believe, this season. And Bungie, why did you do this? Okay, why did you do this? Precision Instrument, if you guys didn't know, is basically like target lock, but worse, okay? However, okay, no, if they gave this thing to a machine gun, it would be decent, okay? Because it would, it would ramp up really fast. That being said, on the weapons that it's currently on, aka snipers, okay, this thing lasts one second, okay? One second, one second. And even if, you dash with rain of fire that is extremely tight so you're not going to carry this thing from mag to mag unless you are cracking out with how optimally you're reloading it right that's number one and number two it stacks up only to 25 ish percent damage and if you miss a shot at all it resets completely okay so precision instrument is basically a worse version of plenty of the other perks in the game it's worse than firing line it's worse than focus fury it's worse than target luck it's worse than it's worse than a lot of stuff okay there's no reason to use this thing it's an extremely punishing perk it's extremely unforgiving I really hope they give it to like a machine gun or something because that would be like kind of decent, right? But besides that, pretty bad, pretty bad. I'm going to place it in the E tier, uh, somewhere near the top of E tier. I think it goes right below heel clip. Yeah, heel clip. And we're going to place it at 109. Okay, next up we have Pugilist. Pugilist is like the demo equivalent for melees, except for it doesn't reload when you get a melee kill, which is fine. Melees are obviously, you know, a little bit more, you know, uh, present i guess in the sandbox and it works off unpowered melees too so i guess that makes sense from a, from a balance standpoint uh that being said uh pugilist can be useful sometimes i would say getting your grenade back is a lot more useful than getting your melee back usually getting your melee back is not as important and on the subclasses where it is really important aka you know strand titan 
Uh, you already have Into the Fray, you know, you have a lot of stuff that gives you your melee back fast. So not that important. That being said, I think it's not a bad perk at all. Um, it just tends to take a slot that would be better off on Grave Robber or another perk, okay? So if Pugilist had Grave Robber ro rolled into it, it would be a fantastic perk, 100%. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and place it in the C tier. It's like an alternative sort of specialist type of perk. And um, I'm going to place it right above Headstone at rank 59. And uh, yeah, right over here, boom. Okay, next up we have Pulse Monitor. Uh, Pulse Monitor is a PvP perk. It is definitely a PvP perk. That being said, um, it does have some crazy contrived instances where you might want to use it in PvE. And, um, you know, you get critical sometimes in PvE. And I guess there's that one stupid Pulse Monitor bipod strat that you can do with, like, Braytech Osprey. I don't know. I, I think that's enough to pull it out of F tier because that is some PvE use, but it's definitely not going anywhere above E tier. So Pulse Monitor, I'm going to go ahead and place it right underneath Eddy Current, and that's going to place it at rank 127. Okay, next up we have Quick Draw. Quick Draw is definitely a PvP perk, but it boosts one of the most important PvE stats, and that is Handling. And it boosts it on Drawing, that's why it's called Quick Draw, right? And um, this is very useful on Shotguns, and if Quick Swapping doesn't get patched next season, Quick Draw will actually be a very, very important perk to have on certain weapons. Now that being said, is that enough to put it in the C tier or the B tier? Certainly not. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the D tier. It's definitely a quality of life perk, and it's very useful for certain very specific instances, which I think is uh, appropriate given some of the other perks that are in D tier, like Osmosis. So Quick Draw, that's ranked 96th. I'm going to go ahead and place it above Hatchling, which is right over here. There's so many perks here, man. Look at, oh my god, so many perks in this game, man. We got we to gotta chill with the perks, man. Okay, next up we have Rampage. Rampage, kind of an OG, an OG damage perk. Um, this thing is very straightforward. It's like Adrenaline Junkie, except for it has no interaction with grenades, and it lasts the same amount of time, and you only need three weapon kills instead of five, okay? Uh, that being said, Rampage, it lasts very short. Even if even with the Rampage spec change, you know, it, it, it lasts a pretty short amount of time. But I think it's a little bit underrated. I think a lot of endgame players write this off. If you had Rampage on a machine gun, you'd probably think that it's pretty similar to Killing Tally, because, and you can stow it too, right? Because, you know, you're getting kills every 5 seconds with a machine gun, and it's the same damage perk, and, I don't know, it's not horrible, it's not horrible is what I'm saying. Uh, that being said, I'm not gonna place it anywhere super high, uh, it's going in the D tier because there's plenty, there's a mountain of options above it that are better than it, but I'm gonna say it's not horrible, it's not horrible. So, D tier, that's gonna place it right below Desperado, that's gonna be rank 76, and we're gonna move on to Rangefinder. Um... Rangefinder is definitely a PvP perk. It basically just increases zoom. The projectile velocity change is basically nil in PvE, at least. That is an extremely small projectile speed change. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and place it in the F tier. It's going to go right above air assaults. I don't think anyone cares about zoom in PvE. And uh, we're going to move on. Next up, we have Rapid Hit. Rapid Hit is one of the most consistent uh, PvE reload perks that people are you know familiar with in this game. Uh, it's been around for a long time. It's basically the stand-in replacement for Outlaw because it's on hits instead of kills. You know on this channel, end game content, we love perks that are on hit instead of on kill. And um, this thing scales up really high. So like I said earlier, uh, you know, Enlightened Action is pretty great. Rapid Hit is also pretty great. We're going to place it in the C tier. Uh, I believe I placed Rapid Hit one position above Enlightened Action. And that's going to put it right over here at rank 47. Okay, next up we have Recombination. Recombination is a pretty... Okay, I don't know why I keep doing that, sorry. Recombination is a pretty awesome perk. Um, it's good on Heritage and Succession and pretty much nothing else. That being said, um, if it's enhanced, you only need 8 stacks, which is pretty nice. And it's a double damage perk for one shot, right? And a lot of the time, in speedruns especially, right? That one shot is all you need to kill a major. It's the difference between killing a major in one shot versus killing a major in two shots. And of course, having 100% damage for one shot is comparable to having a 50% damage perk for two shots or, you know, a 33 for three shots. So you can kind of see how recombination plays out. It's very, very good for short range engagements. And you can even take it into something like a GM in some instances um, with like unstoppable shotgun or something like that. So I think recombination is a pretty solid perk. Uh, pretty unique and um, it's one of the perks where Bungie has made something unique but it's actually still pretty useful so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the A tier um, if I wasn't you know a speedrunner I'd probably put it like a bit lower than that but you know I care about speedrunning so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the A tier uh, we're gonna place it right underneath chill clip but above killing tally and we're going to move on okay next up we have reconstruction reconstruction uh, I know a lot of you are probably expecting this, this to be very high and it is gonna be very high uh, it's not gonna be like you know top three or anything like that but reconstruction is a very good perk basically it acts like auto loading um except for it also acts like overflow except for it doesn't require you to pick up ammo which is really really great um 
It's a stand-in replacement for auto-loading on Apex Predator. It is really, really good on machine guns. It's basically good on anything you can ask for. Like, it's good on uh, Succession. It bypasses the small mag downside of having an aggressive sniper. It It's good on Heritage. It's good on everything, okay? It's good on everything you could possibly, you know, put it on. Um, the only thing I think it maybe might be bad on is primaries because primaries you commit to dumping your entire mag and reloading all the time. That being said, it's, you know, it's still okay on primaries too, right? So I don't, I don't know. Uh, there, there's no question about it. Reconstruction is going to go in the S tier. Uh, I don't think anyone is surprised by that. We're going to go ahead and rank it, I believe, sixth. So that's going to go underneath Envious Assassin, but ahead of fourth times the charm. Okay, next up we have Redirection. Redirection is unfortunately not a very good perk because the way Redirection works is... The first half of the perk wants you to have a weapon that has a high fire rate, that hits a lot of guy, and that hits a lot of you know enemies, right? But the second part of the perk wants you to have a weapon that does high damage per shot. And so on the DSC weapons, none of those weapons fit this bill, right? You have a bunch of high fire rate weapons like you know commemoration, machine gun, trusty, a scout rifle, and then you have a bunch of low fire rate weapons that have high damage per shot like heritage and succession. And your ass is not gonna go and shoot 20 ads with heritage, right? Even though, the, you know, the, the damage bonus is very high, but you're not going to go ahead and shoot 20 as with Heritage. Now, something changed kind of recently, and this perk was given to a wave frame. And wave frames, each, each ammo, each special ammo you spend on a wave frame easily hits multiple targets. And wave frames are good to use on majors as well, right? They're a grenade launcher. It's a good to use on majors. So redirection, it's one of those perks where... I, if, if it had never been put on a wave frame, I probably would have ranked it lower. But, you know, it's kind of opened my eyes to the possibility of this being put on weapons that can hit multiple enemies at the expenditure of one ammo. So I think redirection is not bad. It's not great either. It's very niche. Um, so it's not going to go in the E tier, right? I think if it never got put on wave frames, I probably would have put it in the E tier. It's very bad. But I think I'm going to put it at the top of D tier. It's a, it's a good tier break. Uh, it's a good tier boundary. And uh, we're going to move on to Relentless Strikes. Uh, Relentless Strikes, it is on swords. But I did say I'm not going to discount things for being on swords, you know, for being on certain weapon types. That being said, Relentless Strikes is kind of the essential weapon uh, or the essential, I don't know, perk of choice on a sword. It increases your sword's total damage by a significant amount. Uh, in fact, I, if you guys recall on my sword tier list, I ranked Throne Cleaver lower ex explicitly because it doesn't have Relentless Strikes. For, okay, you know, you know what blows my mind? I think Throne Cleaver is one, it's like the only sword, is the only legendary sword, non-sunset, in Destiny 2 history, up till now, that does not have Relentless Strikes. And it's like the one sword that needed it. So, you know, it sucks, whatever. I don't know, whatever. I I'm done ranting. Relentless Strikes is pretty important for swords, and you can see why. Um, Because, you know, their ammo capacity is not great. So we're going to go ahead and put that in the B tier. In the B tier. And that's going to place it above Overflow, but below Firing Light. Okay, next up we have Replenishing Ages. Okay, that that's me. Okay, this perk has my name in it. So we're going to go ahead and place it right up in the okay no, i'm not i'm kidding we're not gonna put any of this here uh replenishing ages i was actually let down by right much like me it is quite a disappointment however um it's not horrible right uh if you're blocking with your glaive it does extend the amount of time that you can block with your glaive indefinitely that being said if you are a glaive user if you are using a glaive defensively uh in the video game known as destiny 2 you are typically not extensively just sitting there and blocking for an like an indefinite amount of time right when you're doing a gm even a solo gm it's not a contest of how long you can sit there right and if you wanted a weapon perk that extends the efficiency of your glaive and allows you to sit there for longer, a movable object is arguably a much better perk in that regard, right? Replenishing Aegis wastes more ammo, the internal cooldown is annoying, and um, yeah, that's all I have to say. I, I mean, at least you don't have to be sitting still, I guess, I don't know. So Replenishing Aegis, I think it's, uh, I, I overrated it in my glaive tier list, and I, I'm going to, I, I've re-rated that tier list already, but we'll visit it next season. But I'm gonna go ahead and place it in the D tier. It's gonna go right below Hatchling. Damn, I'm a D tier perk, guys. This is so sad. Anyways, we're gonna move on to repulsor brace so repulsor brace repulsor brace is uh it's very good on drill falcons i'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with it on commemoration on uh, hollow denial on harsh language it's very very good on those weapons with um uh, you know uh drill falcons or really like destabilizing rounds i guess if we ever get a very very strong accurate weapon that gets both of those perks it'll be pretty good right it's a very very good survivability kind of perk that being said you know potency wise it's only really good on a specific subclass and really only good on a specific class too to be honest it's not very good on void titan and it's not very good on void warlock either um because you're really not applying void debuffs as much as you can on jerk falcons so it's it's just it's all right it's all right it's definitely limited in its use but you know where it is good it is almost like an essential pick so i'm going to go ahead and place it in the b tier i think it wouldn't be fair to put it in the a tier with some of these insanely great perks i'm going to go ahead and put it in the b tier right below chain reaction 
and uh, we're going to call it at that and move on to Reservoir Burst. Reservoir Burst is awesome, okay? This thing is, not only does it act like Chain Reaction, okay, think about it like this. Chain Reaction is great, right? I put Chain Reaction in the B tier, okay? Smiley face, I put Chain Reaction in the B tier. Reservoir Burst is like Chain Reaction, right? Except it also boosts your damage by 25%. So it's like two of those things built into one. It's a damage perk. It's also a splash damage perk. Very, very great. You can use this thing on bosses. With Envious Assassin, this thing is basically permanent uptime. You can use it on plenty of things. Bungie, please, please give Zealots Reward like Envious Reservoir Burst or Envious like Control Burst. Oh my god, that would be that would actually make me happy. Okay, that would make me happy. It would be, it would be a good ad weapon on majors. That being said, um, you know, glazing aside. We're going to go and put Reservoir Burst at the top of B tier underneath Kinetic Tremors. It is a very, very good perk. Um, it does similar-ish DPS to Control Burst until you run out of that 100% mag phase. And uh, But it also does add clear. It does add clear pretty well. So I'm going to move on. And I don't think, okay, just to be clear, I don't think anything does medium range major burst as good as a Reservoir Burst Fusion does without using heavy ammo. So that's why I think the perk is uh, has its own kind of niche in endgame content. Okay, next up we have Reversal of Fortune. Reversal of Fortune obviously is tied to Revoker. I don't think it's on any other weapons. Um, Reversal of Fortune is basically Mulligan but better, right? It's basically Mulligan but guaranteed. So I'm just going to place it above Mulligan. I don't think Bungie is ever going to put Reversal of Fortune on anything that is not Revoker, so like on an auto rifle. But um, that being said, I you know, it's fine, whatever. I'll just put it there and um, <laughs> we're going to leave it at that. Okay, next up we have, if I'm not mistaken, a Rewind Rounds. Rewind Rounds, I think, is a little bit overrated um, because Envious Assassin kind of does its job but doesn't have that internal cooldown limit where the hits don't count while that timer is ticking down. But that being said, Rewind Rounds is very good on Techian Force. Uh, it's very good on um, Briar's Contempt. Um, you know, it's good on certain weapons. It's good on certain weapons where you want to fire indefinitely. That being said, Envious Assassin usually takes the cake over Rewind Rounds. I think it's a little bit overrated. Um, I used to like it on Praetis Revenge. But, you know, even then, I, I guess it's good on Supremacy too, but, you know, even then, there, there's other options I would probably rather use for the most part. So Rewind Rounds, I'm going to put it in the A tier. It's certainly not an S tier perk, very, very situational, but uh, it's it's pretty decent. It's pretty decent. We're going to place it underneath Killing Tally at rank 18. Okay, next up we have Shattering Blade. Shattering Blade is, um, I think this perk got put on like two swords. It got put on like Honor's Edge and like one other like random world drop sword. Um, this thing is bad. Right? I mean, 67% is a very, very high damage perk, but it is on one attack. It is on one attack, and it is on the attack that fully expends your ammo. So, you know, if Shattering Blade was like, okay, you one, one time per life, you can have a 67% damage boost to a target, right? Maybe it's useful then. Maybe it's useful then. Maybe, you know, you do some good burst damage on like throwing cleaver or something, right? But this thing is on when you run out of ammo. So you're, you're basically useless, right? Because you have no ammo after that, right? Um, yeah. And Shattering Blade sucks. Shattering Blade really, really sucks, I think. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and place it at the bottom of E tier. It is the worst non-PVP perk in the game, in my opinion, um, for PvE. Yeah. Uh, did I just say for PvE? I said for, for PvE twice, whatever. Anyways, let's move on to Shield Disorient. Um, Shield Disorient, I actually used this thing on Zealot's Reward uh, in Master Vogue Entrance back when Match Game was a thing to like blind the Minotaurs when I was dealing with them. Um, that being said, you know, I could have easily achieved the same effect with a blinding grenade launcher and just a regular void fusion with like an actual perk in the first column. Um, Shield Disorient, its time is long gone. There's a reason this perk has basically been shelved and not been given to like anything new recently. So I'm going to go ahead and place it in the E tier. I don't think anyone's going to complain about this. You know, it's again, matching elemental shields and breaking them is not something that's really part of Destiny's core endgame identity like it used to be. You're not really plinking away at, at shields anymore and hoping that they blind enemies near them. Okay, next up we have Shoot to Loot. Okay. You guys know, I love Shoot to Loot, okay? And if you don't love Shoot to Loot, I think you should love Shoot to Loot, okay? Shoot to Loot does a lot of things, right? You can access ammo that's in dangerous areas. Uh, for, for example, let's say you're in a GM and you've just sent a tap to Champion in the middle of the Glassway Lake. You're not going to go out there and pick it up, okay? I mean, some of you might, you know, between phases or whatever, but you, you get my point. Shoot to Loot, very, very good. Number one. Number two. It fully reloads all of your stowed weapons. A lot of people don't know this. I told people this, a lot of them were surprised. It fully reloads all your stowed weapons. And if you play with intention, this is very, very, very useful, okay? In a GM, if you keep track of where a heavy brick is, you can shoot two rockets, boom, shoot a brick, shoot two more rockets, bang. It's insane, right? Wonderful, uh, pairs beautifully with Cenotaph and a shoot to loot trace. Uh, that being said, um, it is a little bit situational. I do understand that. But it is so gameplay defining that I think it should be in the S tier. I think it should be in the S tier. I'm going to go ahead and place it actually above Reconstruction. I'm going to place it right 
over here. I'm going to rank it fifth. Okay. I listen, eager edge, shoot to loot. Give me my two babies. Okay. I'm going to be a little bit biased. Okay. I'm going to put them in the S tier. Give me that at least. Okay. Everything else, everything else I tried to rate kind of fairly here. Okay. But I love shoot to loot. Okay. And I think you should love shoot to loot too. Okay. Enough glazing. We're going to move on. Next up, we have Shot Swap. Shot Swap, I think, is designed to be a PvP perk, but it's like also a PvE perk because it requires you to get a lot of kills to get stacks. Um, I don't know why Bungie thinks that people want to store ready stow handling on weapons in exchange for weapon kills after making a perk like Steady Hands. Like, I'm not sure whose idea this was, but they need to get out of the kitchen. They're they're burning the food, okay? This is worse than my cooking, and my cooking is like... My, you, you guys have seen me cook. My cooking is bad, okay? So, E tier... Bottom of E tier, above full auto trigger system, rank 131, we're going to move on to sleight of hand. Okay, speaking of perks that, you know, require kills and then give you some handling, sleight of hand is a better version of shot swap, okay? Uh, it doesn't require a bunch of kill stacking, it just requires, you know, a couple kills on a different weapon, and um, it gives you handling and reload. It gives you handling and reload um, for pulling out a weapon, and it gives you for a fair amount of time as well, like 7-8 seconds, right? So that's not bad. Um, that being said, sleight of hand... There are certainly better options for maintaining handling or maintaining reload. And um, if sleight of hand was like, I don't know, or a stowed reload or something like that and encroached on envious assassins territory with a weaker effect, I think it would be a lot more useful. But as it stands, it's basically like a harmony version that requires you to manually reload, which I don't really like. So I'm going to go ahead and put sleight of hand in the E tier, rank 114, and that's going to place it right below loose change, wherever that is right there. Boom. Okay. Oh, next up, we have Slick Draw, okay? Slick Draw is kind of like Quick Draw, except for it doesn't go away when you ADS, which is good because when you're quick swapping and you're doing like shotgun swaps, usually you're ADS. So I think Slick Draw is a little bit better. The minus target acquisition is not really an important factor because usually you are right in front of a boss, maybe shooting a dip bubble or maybe you're shooting directly into a boss's big ass belly um, with a shotgun. So, you know, not having target acquisition is not that important. So I'm going to go ahead and put Slick Draw slightly above Quick Draw because they do basically the same thing, but I think Slick Draw is a little bit better. Okay, next up we have Slide Shot. Slide Shot is basically slide ways, but no internal cooldown and boosts slightly different stats. Slide Shot is very, very good in PvE on weapons that have low mag counts. So if we ever get a rocket with Slide Shot, a lot of LFGs are going to die. I'm going to say that, but it is going to be pretty good. Okay, if we ever get a rocket with Slide Shot, that's going to be pretty real boss. And... um dude imagine shooting three rockets in one slide oh oh my heart would you know you know anyways uh ignition code has already shown us how good this weapon uh how good this perk can be on uh on like a single mag shot weapon so you know considering that in, in you know in my in my factors i'm gonna go ahead and rank slide shot um probably you know above the pvp tier right i don't think it deserves to be in the pvp tier we're gonna go ahead and put in the c tier i'm gonna put in the c tier we're gonna put it right above pugilist for its burgeoning potential and we're gonna leave it at that next up we have slideways slideways is like slide shots uh you know mediocre younger brother hasn't learned the tricks of the trades yet still has an internal cooldown big noob um it's been used on militias, right? Slideways ALH on militias is pretty decent, right? It's a very high uptime grenade launcher. That being said, it does not have the damage potential that slide shot does. You cannot just like shoot three blinding GL shots in a row or shoot three rockets in a row. People have tried making slideways rotations on Apex Predator and they have made fools of themselves. So don't do it. But don't do it. Okay. Slideways, big noob. Don't use slideways. It is definitely more of a PvP perk than anything. But uh, I will say, you know, it's not in the F2. So I'm going to put it in the D tier. We're going to put it slightly above perpetual motion wherever perpetual motion is i have lost track there are so many just so many images on the screen man i can't handle this okay anyways moving on we have snapshot okay snapshot sites snapshot sites is basically i mean post nerf it's not as noticeable on snipers anymore but i would argue that if you have a sniper in pve and you're speed running um having snapshot on your sniper is nice because you can just pull it out and you can snipe an ad and uh, if you don't need a damage perk on your sniper, it can be very useful. It's it's a, it's like a feel good perk. That being said, it is definitely still definitely a PVP perk. But I would I would put it up in in the upper area, you know, in the upper area of the in, of the PVP perk section. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and place it right underneath backup plan, and that's going to be ranked 139th, 139th. Okay, wonderful. Next up, we have Sneak Bow. Now, Sneak Bow, I underrated. Wobby got a little mad at me. He, he, he had a little pout on his little face. And he was saying, you know, why'd you underrate Sneak Bow? And I was like, isn't draw time way more important than, like, you know, reload on bows? Isn't reload not that important? And uh, he said reload is, you know, reload's still kind of important. You know, it's still part of the equation. And um, it's kind of like field prep for bows. It's like field prep, but at home, right? Um, it also, I don't know, it has some, like, PvP use, I guess. Uh, increases your arrow hold time like i don't think any of this is pretty useful i mean it's basically just a reload buff 
for bows if you're crouching. Um, is there a universe where you would take Sneak Bow over like another bow perk like Archer's Tempo? I, I sure hope not. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, Sneak Bow in the E tier. Um, I used to have it like really at the bottom of E tier, but I'm going to put it like somewhere up here. I think it's not bad. It's not horrible, right? It's not the end of the world. Okay. Next up, we have Stats for All. Okay. Stats for All, um, I, again, Stats for All is like one for all, except for the benefit is much less relevant in endgame PvE. One for all, 33% buff to like, I don't know, like a, like a machine gun, pretty good, right? Stats for all, it doesn't reload your weapon for you, it just gives you reload speed. And the reload speed buff isn't even that high, right? It's like 35 with like a little tiny bit of a reload duration multiplier, right? Now the buff duration is pretty good and obviously you can meet those requirements using one for all, but I would rather honestly have reconstruction or subsistence over stats for all on a one for all machine gun. And I think if you're being honest with yourself, you would probably agree. Right? You don't want to reload manually reloading your machine gun is slow regardless, right? So stats for all, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the E tier. We're going to put that right below loose change right over here. And we're going to move on to steady hands. Okay, steady hands. Steady hands is um, a bit underrated, a bit underrated. And I'll explain why. Okay, um, steady hands basically gives you a dragon's shadow effect for getting a single weapon kill. And it gives you it for like nine seconds, which is like pretty long. That's pretty long. Um, I've actually replaced Ambitious Assassin with Steady Hands on my Forbearance. Now, am I suggesting you should try this at home? No, do not try this at home. Now, that being said, I'm a speedrunner. I like my guns feeling snappy and I like Steady Hands. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put Steady Hands next to Quick Draw and Slick Draw because those are also handling boosting perks. And I think it's kind of nice. And I think um, someone has also mentioned to me recently that they used it in like Solo Explicator because in Solo Explicator, if you're like procking bait, um, you know, you don't really need your other weapons to be, you know, super high DPS or anything. So I don't know. They said they got a sniper kill with like steady hands and like swapped super quickly or something. I don't know. Whatever. Steady hands. Yeah, I've already explained what I think of this uh, perk. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the D tier uh, right underneath quick draw. Okay. All right. How many perks do we have left? We have, uh, I don't know. That looks like maybe 30, 25. Okay, let's move on to Subsistence. Subsistence, I underrated this perk mostly because in its unenhanced form, it only refills 10% of your mag, which is pretty pitiful. But at 20%, I actually strongly believe this thing is better than Reconstruction on Commemoration. Why? Commemoration, how big is its mag? I don't know, like 60, 70, something like that. 20% of your mag is like, what, 12 to 15 shots? You are never going to take more than 12 to 15 shots on average to kill a red bar, even in a GM right? So subsistence can theoretically shoot even longer than reconstruction can and at like a much more linear cost, right? You don't have to wait in the background after you're done shooting from engagement to engagement. You can just use this thing pretty much nonstop unless you were dumping it into a champ, which I got news for you. Please don't dump commemoration into like a boss, right? That's not a good idea, right? Use your other weapons. Um, so yeah, that being said, um, subsistence, I'm not going to rate it obviously as high as reconstruction because it just applies to way less weapons. Um, but that's, yeah, that's my thoughts on the matter. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the B tier. I think I've underrated it a little bit. Enhanced subsistence is quite good and I am, uh, I'm incorporating enhanced, uh, factors into this list as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right underneath firefly and right above one for all. And we are going to move on to successful warm up. Okay. Successful warm up is, um, where is it? Where's successful warm up? That's right here. Sorry, I'm blind. Uh, successful warm up is actually pretty unique, right? A lot of perks that give you draw time reductions or benefits, they don't stack up in duration, right? They only give it to you for six seconds. This perk would be your run of the mill PVP perk if it only lasted six seconds. That being said, successful warm up lasts up to 20 seconds, 20 seconds if you get additional kills. So this thing is like the ultimate spree perk on like a fusion rifle. That being said, is this thing better than reservoir burst? Is it better than control burst? Absolutely not, right? It doesn't increase your damage doesn't increase your total damage and you know in endgame content you want that damage perk to increase the likelihood of you killing an ad in one shot right so i'm gonna go ahead and put successful warm up in the d tier i don't think it's in the e tier or in the f tier like you know your standard pvp perk just because of that extension of duration it is pretty noticeable it is pretty noticeable and that is a huge charge slash draw time reduction by the way and like 0.625 x that is massive that is absolutely massive so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and put that thing solidly in the d tier we're gonna rank it 74th i'm gonna put it right behind outlaw okay next up we have surplus surplus is basically like a worse version of some of the other uptime perks on this list that are like consistent right like you, you have frenzy which is the peak uh uptime perk and then you have stuff like perpetual motion uh, this thing basically requires you to have either a subclass with multi-ability charges like Stasis Hunter or Strand Warlock and for you to kind of use those abilities sparingly or for you to like not use your abilities at all on other subclasses, which is like pretty bad. 
Um, the only thing I would even consider using surplus on is like shotgun swapping where you're not using your other like abilities in like a raid speed run or something like that. But even then is like threat detector is just better, right? Because if you're on a shotgun, you're near an enemy. So surplus, I'm going to go ahead and rank that in the D tier. Uh, I'm going to rank it 87th, which is going to place it right underneath the celery perk. Right underneath the celery perk, if I can find it. My eyes are just like bleeding right now, bro. Okay, there we go. Boom. Okay. Oh, next up, we have Surrounded. Uh, Surrounded is a pretty situational perk, but that being said, uh, I have not actually rated this perk based on stuff like Crota DPS or Iryu DPS where you're surrounded or like Briar's Contempt DPS. Yes, those are factors. I'm actually ranking this perk based on its roam potential. Surrounded is a very, very, very good perk to have on something like a rapid fire shotgun if you're going around and you're nuking majors. Uh, for example, I have a Grave Robber Surrounded Icolos SG that I use in Gambit a lot. And although Gambit is not end game content, um, Surrounded shotguns do an absolutely massive amount of damage with a high damage frame like a rapid fire frame shotgun. So I think Surrounded is very, very ammo efficient in roam content. And um, I think it is certainly usable. I wouldn't call it like a top tier perk. So I'm going to go ahead and put Surrounded in the B tier, along with all the other perks that are either decent uh, for damage or a little bit situational. So we're going to place that 35th, which I believe goes right below Fire Line. And we're going to move on to Swashbuckler. Okay, Swashbuckler is basically Adrenaline Junkie, but for... Um, Melees, uh, in my opinion, melees are more plentiful than grenades in this instance. I think, okay, I, I know I'm going to get hated for this because a lot of people stick by the demo AJ combo. Um, me and Wabi, we kind of discussed this a lot. I think AJ is very overrated, right? First of all, duration and second of all, damage bonus, right? Something like Tricorn is just better. It's just better. Uh, killing Tally is better. One for all is better. Those are all better perks, right? Which is why obviously they're rated higher up in the list. And I think Swashbuckler, if you want a one and done, right? Think about how Bungie has balanced Demo and Pugilist. They acknowledge that grenades are lesser uptime than melees. Think about Swashbuckler versus Adrenaline Junkie. They're the exact same perk, except melees have better uptime. I'm going to put Swashbuckler above Adrenaline Junkie. And that means I'm going to go ahead and place it in the C tier as well. But we're going to place it just slightly above Adrenaline Junkie at rank 66. Okay, next up we have Sword Logic. Sword Logic... Um, I think I overrated this perk a little bit. Um, I really like the idea of being able to kill a bigger target and then extend that damage buff indefinitely on smaller targets. And the duration is obviously a lot better than something like, uh, you know, Adrenaline Junkie. Uh, that being said, you know, you do have to kill Orange Bars for it and you're not going to ever reach the top tier damage perk. You have to kill a boss, like a straight up boss to hit that 50% damage perk. And so, I don't know, Sword Logic, I guess Sword Logic would be maybe decent on like a like a rocket or like a linear or something like that where you're like killing majors and bosses galore and you're really keeping that long duration up but that being said i i don't really think this perk is as good and killing tally you know for being a neutral damage perk uh, is certainly much better for roam content i think than sword logic so i'm gonna go ahead and put sword logic in the b tier we're gonna place it right beneath subsistence and we're gonna call it at that okay next up we have sympathetic arsenal uh sympathetic arsenal is you know not bad right? Sympathetic Arsenal is not bad, um, mostly because it actually gives you passive 20 reload speed, which is not bad at all, right? That's a decent passive perk to have. And, um, you know, Wabi pointed this out to me, but if we ever get it on a waveframe grenade launcher, if we ever get it on single shot weapons, it's already appeared on bows and it's okay on bows. If we ever get it on like a grenade launcher, um, that's going to be like a single shot grenade launcher, like forbearance or something like that. It's going to be pretty decent, right? So with that in mind, um, I'm not going to play Sympathetic Arsenal in like the F tier or in like, you know, the E tier. I'm going to go ahead and place it in the D tier. I'm going to go ahead and place it right beneath Replenishing Aegis, which is right over here. And we're going to rank it 100. 100. The triple digits. Okay, next up we have Tap the Trigger. Tap the Trigger is definitely a PvP perk. It's definitely designed for that. Um, that being said, it is kind of nice because in a lot of PvP, sorry, in a lot of PvE content, you're tapping weapons, um, especially stuff like trace rifles. I actually used a shoot to loot, tap the trigger, um, path of least resistance for a long time, and it, it definitely feels very, very stable compared to just how it is right now, uh, where I have Voltron on it. That being said, is that useful? No. Is it going to be over F tier? No. So I'm going to go ahead and put tap the trigger. Um, probably, you know, in, in the upper section of the F tier, I'm going to go ahead and place it right underneath dynamic sway reduction. And uh, we're going to call it at that. Okay. Next up, we have target lock. Okay. Target lock is uh, pretty overrated, right? Number one, target lock is immensely restricted in what weapons it can be on. Number one, it can only work on weapons that shoot five times a second or more, which is very few weapons, right? That's like maybe rapid fire autos and machine guns and trace rifles, right? That's pretty, that's basically it, right? And um, it's very unforgiving as well, right? If you ever miss 
any shots within zero it's a zero, within 0 0.2 seconds of each other right you ever miss any shots your stacks go down to zero and it takes a while you have to commit to it right and so the only gun where it really makes sense to commit to fully commit to shooting the gun for that long on a single target is retrofit right and i'm not going to give target lock flowers just for being good on a boss dps oriented machine gun right so i don't know if we ever get some sort of special crazy heavy weapon type that is really really good for just dumping straight into a boss but is less good for ad clear i don't know target lock might be decent but for now it seems like it's a very very situational perk uh, i'm gonna go ahead and put target lock in the c tier right it's like a perk alternative um, even though it does scale very high, it takes a very long time to reach those heights and it's very inconsistent and very limited in its use. So I'm going to go ahead and place it in the C tier right underneath Focus Fury. Uh, yep, that is correct at 40 seconds. Okay, next up we have Threat Detector. Threat Detector, commonly known amongst endgame players as one of the most consistent reload perks on stuff like SMGs, on shotguns, anything where you're close to other enemies. Threat Detector is wonderful for that. Uh, if you're just near two enemies, this thing gives you, what is it? a handling animation duration multiplier it gives you a hundred handling it gives you 60 reload like that is really that's like almost frenzy levels of bonuses here and you get a duration multiplier as well which is wonderful right so threat detector is really really great if you're just any near enemies in general right like using an smg or something like that um obviously it's uptime is still worse than frenzy and i would probably rather have something like demo or grave robber or something like that on some of the weapons that i just mentioned but i'm going to go ahead and put it in the c tier it's certainly an alternative it's not my number one pick for uptime but it's certainly an alternative and i'm going to go ahead and rank it 46 which is going to place it right underneath discord and we're going to move on to thresh okay uh thresh compared to demo and pugilist it's kind of twin and brothers siblings whatever you want to call it uh easily the least useful out of the bunch because if you it, it, it's a very small amount of super number one right and number two um the most efficient way to get super energy is using helmet mods so whether that is dynamo whether that is ashes to assets whether that is hands-on all three of those mods will give you much more super than using a thresh weapon and of course thresh requires that you commit to gun gameplay right and thresh also typically takes the fourth damage uh takes, takes the fourth perk column i should say which is typically the damage slot so you're giving up a damage perk to get more super for committing to using a weapon that doesn't have a damage perk right so kind of a bit nonsensical a little bit counterintuitive uh, and there are certainly much 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 better ways to get super compared to using something like a thresh rocket or a thresh machine gun so i'm gonna go ahead and put thresh in the d tier it is useful maybe in some instances i wish it scaled more on certain weapons maybe but i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna go ahead and put it in the d tier we're gonna place it right above kill clip and we're gonna move on to tilting at windmills okay so tilting at windmills is um one of the i think it's the oldest glaive perk i think it came out on release with the enigma um this thing is a big question mark right like first of all yeah some people move with glaives right but like increasing your glaive move speed while you're blocking like seriously that that, that that's a perk that is like important in end game content yeah like no right first of all glaive dr is so high that like you can move like as slow as a turtle if you want and you're probably still going to be safe right and number two tilting and windmills takes the place of something like impulse amplifier or auto loading holster or lead from gold or like a bunch of other perks that are 99 million times better than tilting and windmills so tilting and windmills one of the most useless perks in the game i'm gonna put in the e tier we're gonna place it above shot swap we're gonna leave it at that and move on to time payload time payload i don't really think i need to tell you where this thing is going to be i mean it's I, I, it's the same thing as explosive head and you know explosive payload i'm just going to go ahead and put it in the b tier we're going to place it right over here or sorry, I placed it above explosive head, so that's like right over here. Okay, moving on, we have Tireless Blade. Tireless Blade, um, the only thing that's bad about this perk is that it implies that you are getting kills with a sword rapidly, and um, swords are not really good for getting rapid kills. If you want rapid kills, there's a cool thing called a machine gun, which does it just as effectively, but from a long distance, very safe, and has better utility perks. So Tireless Blade, bit silly. I do like the enhanced perk, uh, you know, that chance to give you two ammo is kind of nice. It definitely extends how much ammo you have. But again, you're really not using a sword for ad clear for the most part. And if you are, God bless. Okay, uh, Tireless Blade, I'm going to go ahead and rank it in the D tier. It's certainly not like useless level like E tier, uh, but I'm going to put it in the D tier and we're going to rank it at rank 105, which goes right above Genesis, which is right over here. Okay. Oh my God, my, my, my voice is going out. <laughs> next up we have tracking module tracking module used to be kind of favored on hothead for gms uh like tracking clown tracking explosive light um i think tracking explosive light is still good on hothead for like arc surge gms um i think it's still one of the best rockets that you can bring to that level of gm 
Uh, that being said, that's really, really niche. I don't think tracking module is even useful on bosses that move a lot. On those bosses, you'd probably rather be using hitscan weapons instead of wasting like reconstruction for tracking module. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and rank tracking module pretty low. I'm going to put it in the D tier. It's going to be ranked 72nd, which is going to place it right below Disruption Break and above Outlaw. Okay, next up we have Trench Barrel. Trench Barrel is one of the best shotgun perks in the game. Um, if 1-2 Punch didn't exist, it would probably be the best shotgun perk in the game. For the cost of one lowly melee, you get three 50% damage boost shots, and you get reload speed, and you get handling, which is great on shotguns like aggressives that struggle in those two departments. Um, that being said, a lot of people are disappointed with Trench because they use it on stuff like rapid fires. Folks, do not use Trench Barrel on rapid fire frames. The faster your shotgun fires, the worse Trench Barrel becomes. Use Trench Barrels on shotguns that fire slowly. On aggressive frames, Trench Barrels are almost a 40-50% to 50 flat DPS increase, which is insane, right? Aggressive frames already have okay damage, and doing that extends their total damage and makes them almost a boss viable strategy. I'm telling you, an aggressive frame shotgun with Trench Barrel reload cancelling is up there with some of the bad exotic heavies. So, Trench Barrel is really, really good on slower firing shotguns. Just remember that. If you ever need a reminder of why that is the case, look no further than Legend of Acrius and how good it has become as a result of its catalyst. So, Trench Barrel, I'm going to put it in the A tier. It's going to be the tier boundary guardian of the A tier, right at the bottom. And we're going to call that rank 19. Okay, next up we have Triple Tap. Triple Tap is basically Relentless Strikes for not swords. And I guess, I guess it should be the other way around. Relentless Strikes is like Triple Tap for swords whatever you get what i'm saying every three hits you get one ammo back uh, if you do the math triple tap if you do perfect reload canceling and you don't have any downtime in between shots um triple tap ends up boosting your total damage by 50 percent. so it's basically half as good as four times a charm um i would also argue that triple tap is worse in some ways because it um has worse compatibility with extending small size mags right four times a charm does that a little bit better so triple tap i'm gonna go ahead i mean it is an ammo extension perk which is pretty nice i'm gonna go ahead and put it in the b tier and um, I'm going to go ahead and rank it right underneath Relentless Strikes, mostly because Relentless Strikes is, you know, more essential, I would say, to Sora's than Triple Tap is to something like a Linear. And Relentless Strikes is more brain dead to use. You don't have to hit Precisions with that, obviously, right? Okay. Oh, oh, Lord. Okay, next up we have Tunnel Vision. Tunnel Vision is obviously a PvP perk. Uh, it's like an aim assist perk. Um, yeah, I mean, Tunnel Vision, what does it boost? It's like aim assist, uh, your cone, it gives you a little bit of handling. I mean, it does boost handling, which is a PvE stat. So I'm going to go ahead and put it like right underneath Perfect Float at um, 145 and we're going to move on. Okay, next up I believe that is Turnabout. Turnabout gives you a 30, which is almost nothing. 30 HP overshield for breaking a shield, which is like, I don't think anyone cares. I mean, I guess on an anti-barrier primary with like adaptive munitions, Turnabout isn't the worst thing in the world. But I'm telling you, a 30 HP overshield peels away from you like butter in GM content. So, you know, Turnabout, I'm just going to place it in the E tier. I don't think there's any reason to use this over something like Genesis. Um, and it's obviously it's laughable compared to something like Repulsor, which gives you a DR overshield, which is even more HP. So I'm going to go ahead, yeah, put it in the E tier. Uh, we're going to rank it 118th, which is going to place it right underneath BER, which is right over here. Boom. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. 11 perks, right? 11, 12 perks left. Okay. We're, we're final stretch. Under pressure. Under pressure is next. Under pressure is a PvP perk, no doubt about that. Under pressure also requires you to be below 50% of your mag, which makes it a PvP perk because you spawn it with very little special ammo. Uh, that being said, it doesn't do anything in PvE because it it boosts your aim assist cone and uh, gives you stability, which is like, who cares in, in PvE? So yeah, no doubt going to be placing it 158th above Encore and we're going to move on to... Oh, did I skip a perk? I skipped a perk, my bad, my bad. Um... Oh wait, no, I just had these in the wrong order. Either that or... Oh, I see what happened. Okay, okay. I'm using two different um, alphabetical order systems and one of them placed under pressure below before under over. Yeah, my bad. Anyways, under pressure, we're going to place it below uh, Encore. And we're going to move on to under over. Uh, under over is basically a worse version of adaptive munitions, right? Under over, it boosts your damage to elemental shields and it boosts your damage to... Wait, does it even boost your damage to elemental shields? Oh, I guess it does. Okay, yeah. And Barrier Champion Shields. Yeah, this is basically like a worse version of Adaptive Munitions. Adaptive Munitions scales to like something crazy, like 650, 550%. This thing does 125. This thing is bad. Okay, it's bad. Uh, I'm going to go and place under over in the E tier. We're going to rank it 119th, which is going to place it right beneath, beneath Turnabout, which I think kind of makes sense. Um, if I can find Turnabout amongst this mess of images. Okay, next up we have Underdog. Okay, shout out to ATP. Underdog, if this was an ATP tier list, I think it would, this would be in the S plus tier. 
in the ATP tier. You know, I can make another uh, a tier up here called ATP. Underdog, along with Unrelenting. I mean, Unrelenting is like, you know, the better child of the two. It actually ended up, you know, being, <laughs> being, being the, uh, not a bad perk, right? Underdog, on the other hand, completely shelved by Bungie, completely neglected. Nobody uses this thing anymore. Nobody has this thing on a, on a weapon anymore. No new weapons get this thing. Uh, underdog, basically, if you're low HP, you get more reload, which is like, it's like Pulse Monitor, but worse, because Pulse Monitor does that, but also just reloads your weapon for you, right? So Underdog, I'm going to place it in the E tier, underneath Pulse Monitor, and um, yeah, we're going to call it at that. Okay, next up, speaking of that, we have Unrelenting. Uh, underdog Unrelenting, classic combo from, from the ATP server. Uh, that being said, Unrelenting got boosted a lot, it got buffed a lot. Um, for killing one elite, or for killing three, like, thralls, right? Three little, uh, three little red bars, right? You instantly gain HP and you start healing, right? Now, that being said, Unrelenting usually exists in the third column. And would you rather have that or a reload perk? Really depends on the gun. I actually have a forbearance with Unrelenting for GMs, which I do actually like using a lot. But would you rather have Unrelenting or, like, Reconstruction on something like a Commemoration? You know, it's kind of a hard pass. So, theoretically, Unrelenting, in my opinion, it's a good perk. But would you rather have it or other stuff? probably other stuff and generally speaking if you want healing you're not going to be getting it from a weapon perk you're going to be getting it from a build so something like devour or something like void overshield or something like cure or restoration or like literally any of those things so yeah unrelenting it, it's a good perk but i think it's it's its goals are a little bit misplaced so i'm going to go ahead and put it in the c tier we're going to place it right beneath cold steel and we're going to move on to unstoppable force okay so unstoppable force unstoppable force in my opinion is pretty bad right and the reason why is it is basically a free 20 percent increase to projectile damage and some people you know in my chat on during the glaive tier list were like hey it's good because you know if you're stunning an unstoppable champion with unstopped glaive you can shoot it and it will do more damage and i'm like are we why are you shooting a champion with a glaive right like a glaive projectile uh, to my understanding at least a glaive projectile exists solely to get glaive energy okay glaives do some of the worst special weapon like glaives are out dps by like a lot of primaries i think right like gla gla glaives have very poor damage right so boosting a glaives projectile damage by 20 percent is not particularly helpful okay would you rather have unstoppable or frenzy i'd much rather have frenzy frenzy is active all the time not just while i'm blocking and it's 15 percent, which is only slightly less than 20 okay so unstoppable force clearly you know outclassed outshined requires you to be blocking and only boost projectile damage so i'm gonna go ahead and place it in the d tier i think it's largely overrated on glaives and we're gonna move on to valiant charge okay so valiant charge uh valiant charge a lot of people were exploring this in the speedrunning community because it used to work on healing your allies and you would basically have infinite eager edge level you know lunging for a little while that being said, it's not... I think that interaction got patched, I'm pretty sure. And even then, it's nowhere near the ease of use that Eager Edge has. So I'm going to go ahead and put Valiant Charge in the E tier. There's no reason to be really using this thing. It's just worse than Eager Edge in pretty much every instance, especially with how easy it is to reproc Eager Edge these days after the multiple Eager changes, which make it come back a lot faster. So I'm going to go ahead and place it right above Cornered, but, above, but below Adagio, and we're going to move on. <clears throat> okay. Last six perks. Last six perks. Oh lord. Okay. Volchot. Volchot is up next. All right. Volchot is one of the better 3.0 perks. Uh, it has intrinsic overload on subclasses that are not art, right? So on something like a Path of Least Resistance, you can kill a drag and then shoot an overload champion, then boom, you have free overload. Um, ever since the Volchot changes, it's basically irrelevant on boss DPS now. That being said, you know, it is okay for like a little bit of splash ad clear, but you know, jolting in GMs off a trace rifle or, you know, off like a GL. Like, would you rather use Volshot on Prodigal Return, or would you rather have Chain Reaction on Salvo? I think any player with, uh, you know, their right mind would probably pick Salvo. So, Volshot, not insanely great, but does have some utility. And on weapons like Path of Least Resistance, it is kind of like best in slot in that perk column. Um, but it's mostly for a lack of options. So, I'm going to go ahead and place it in the B tier. We're going to place it below Explosive Head. Uh, if I can find Explosive Head. Damn, this is a huge tier list. Okay, right over here. And we're gonna place it above firing line. Okay, next up we have Vorpal Weapon. Vorpal Weapon, ever since its nerf from 15% on heavies, has seen just a decline since then. On primaries, it's 20%, but on primaries, you'd much rather have Frenzy or something like that. If we're taking that 5% L, not a big deal. Special weapons, 15%, decent on options that don't have anything else. But on snipers, you have firing line. On shotguns, you have trench barrel, you have surrounded, you have once you punch. On fusion rifles, you have controlled burst, you have reservoir burst. On Glaives, you have Frenzy. Like, why are you using Vorpal, right? So Vorpal is literally your last resort, is your baseline perk. There's really no reason to use a Vorpal weapon unless you have no other option. 
That being said, it is good old faithful. It is very reliable. There is no activation requirement besides shooting a boss or a vehicle, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the B tier just because of how universal it is. That being said, it is not the top pick for pretty much anything. So I'm going to go ahead and place it. That is a C tier. Sorry, I'm going to place it in the B tier right above Relentless Strikes, but below Surrounded. Okay, next up, we have Well-Rounded. Well-Rounded is definitely a PvP-esque perk. Um, I've gone ahead and placed it at the top of the F tier, however, because it does boost handling and it doesn't require kills. It just requires ability use, right? I think a lot of people think that Well-Rounded is uh, decent in PvE. I really don't think so. The stat boost is very, very small, right? It's only like 20 handling and max stacks and no reload which, you know, you're a lot better using other options. But, you know, I will give it some credit for boosting a PvE stat as well as being on ability use, not even on ability hit or kill. So with that being said, I'm going to put it underneath Killing Wind and we're going to move on to Wellspring. Okay, Wellspring is, um, it gives a pretty pitiful amount of ability energy and that ability energy can be spread to abilities that you don't want to recharge. For example, your class ability, right? So Wellspring, you know, it did get a buff so it doesn't have that internal cooldown anymore, which is very useful. It can be good on wave frames. Um, I think Wellspring on Forbearance and Deafening Whisper is a bit underrated. That being said, is it a top tier perk? Certainly not, but I would definitely put it above anything in the D tier. I'm going to go ahead and rank it 62nd, which is going to place it right underneath Lasting Impression, and we're going to call it at that. Okay, our final two perks. Whirlwind Blade. Whirlwind Blade is a shadow of its former self uh, because the meta has changed and it got nerfed. Number one, the meta Surrounded Swords exists now, right? Surrounded is just a much more relevant perk on sword relevant bosses. Um, and even in sword roam content, I would rather use Surrounded because I'm not going to hit a champion 10 times to get a 30% buff when I could just hit it once with Surrounded and get Surrounded, right? And Surrounded is like, what, like 42%, 41.8% on swords? So yeah, Surrounded is the better pick. Uh, and so is something like On Guard, even like something like that on roam content. So Whirlwind Blade really fell off, requires 10 hits, 10 hits for parity. Uh, I don't know. It, not even parity. It's just to hit, to hit 30%. So I'm going to go ahead and rank it 69th. It's going to be at the bottom of C tier. It's going to be our tier breaker for the C and D tier boundary. And we're going to move on to finally Zen Moment. The only perk that starts with a Z. Zen Moment, uh, it's definitely a PvP perk. I'm sure everybody is aware of that. Um, I, I like to see it as a version of dynamic sway reduction that's like a little bit worse, right? It's, uh, you know, as you continue to, to, to fire and hit enemies, you get, you know, better recoil and you get some flinch resistance. I think DSR is better though. We're just going to put it right in the middle of F tier at a solid 143. Okay. Oh Lord, that is it for the perk tier list. Okay. Um, now. This perk tier list is not perfect, like I said. We're going to update this every season as new perks trickle in. If you guys have any feedback, just remember, right? Um, I guess I guess the people that uh, this comment is meant for are not going to see this. A lot of people, they skip to the end of the tier list and then they leave a YouTube comment. Um, I would implore you to at least visit the timestamp. Visit the timestamp of the perk that I'm talking about to understand why I placed it there. A lot of people, for example, are like, why is Blight Ranger not in the F tier? And I'm like, you did not watch the video. So, you know. Please watch the video, or at least at the very least, if you're going to comment on something in the tier list, watch the timestamp. I, I left you guys some wonderful timestamps in the description. There's a reason why I put things where I put them. And um, this is obviously an end game structured tier list. That being said, I love feedback. Um, I kind of want to create, I mean, you know, in, in games like Smash League, there's end game tier lists where people like move things based on how good they are and viability. I want to create something like that for the Destiny 2 community where we can put perks uh, and shift them up and down every season based on meta changes and stuff like that. Buffs, debuffs, whatever. Debuffs, buffs, nerfs. And um, I think that'd be really cool to have as a community. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll leave it at that. And you guys have a good one. We're going to do raid and counter tier list next. I'm going to get primaries out of the way. And then um, yeah, I'm going to do some tier list for fun. And then we're going to move to our, our regularly scheduled programming. I'm going to do like solo content, speedrun guides, lots of fun stuff coming up soon. So I will see you guys then. Goodbye for now.